from the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. This is a public hearing on bills referred to the committee and scheduled in the House calendar for today. An executive session will be held on any bill referred to this committee. Please note that there is no physical location for members of the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that all the members of the committee and elected legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the Zoom electronic meeting platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in the meeting by the Zoom platform or by telephone. All necessary access information has been made available in the House calendar and through the electronic calendar on the General Court website. The notice for this meeting complies with the House rules and RSA 91-A. Anyone who has a problem accessing the meeting should call 271-3600 or email hcs at ledge.state.mh.us. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call votes. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance with each member states their presence. Please also state whether there's anybody in the room with you during this meeting, which is required on the right to know law. All right, Keith, you're up. All right, testing one, two, three. All right, calling the roll. Representative Hunt. I'm here in uh, and by myself. Representative Patusik. I am here upstairs in my room and my wife is downstairs and we'll be going to curves in a little while. Okay. Representative Osborne. Uh, here in my dungeon in Auburn, um, <laughs> no, no persons or creatures with me in the room. Okay, Representative Ammon present. Representative Abramson. Here alone. Representative Ham. Here alone. Representative De Palma. Hello. Representative Grayson. Present and alone. Representative Johnson. Here and alone. Representative Terry. Present alone in this room. Pre uh, Representative uh, Bartlett. Here alone in this room. Representative Abel. Uh, home alone. Sounds like a movie. <laughs> Representative Herbert. Uh, here uh, alone in this room. Representative Van Houten. Here alone. Representative Fargo. I'm here alone. Representative Weston. Here alone in my office. Representative Bellew. Here, uh, home and uh, alone in this room. Representative Burroughs. I'm here, uh, my husband is in the house and there are a few workers in the house as well. Representative McAleer. Um, I'm alone in this room. My wife is in the house and I just heard her fall. Not really fall, <laughs> knock something over. <laughs> and everyone's power is on, so that's a good thing. Okay, that's the roll. Uh, 19 present. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, my power has gone off and on. Uh, our power went out last night. So I, if I disappear, it's uh, that's probably it. The winds are pretty bad out here on the seacoast. Uh, the winds are bad everywhere. But yes, uh, um, I certainly understand it. And um, we'll, if, if this, uh, hopefully it won't affect our executive session when we're all supposed to be seeing each other when we vote, but we'll see how this works out. Um, the good news is that uh, we have today, we have tomorrow afternoon, and then theoretically we have next week, which obviously I, I would like to try to avoid um, scheduling it for, but, but we, we do have it if, if, uh, if the creek rises or the wind blows, <laughs> as it may be. Okay, uh, we'll open up the public hearing on House Bill 265, and we'll hear from Representative Rung, who's sitting in for uh, Representative Cushing. Representative Rung, it feels like it was about a year ago that we last saw each other getting on an airplane, jet blue flight to Puerto Rico. That's right. <laughs> Actually, Vir Virgin Gorda for you, I think. And it was Virgin, <laughs> it was uh, St. John for me. That's but right. uh, well, it's nice to see you again. Hopefully, we'll see each other 
flying together on to a sunny beach somewhere. Yes, um, yes. Thank you very much, Chairman Hunt and my esteemed colleagues for the of, of the Commerce Committee. I'm here um, in place of Representative Rennie Cushing to introduce House Bill 265. Um, it's an important bill um, because it enables residents to have confidence that when they buy bottled drinking water in New Hampshire, that it meets all of the standards set forth by the state. Um, however, you've heard all the testimony on this already because this is identical to House Bill 335, which has already gone through the public hearing process. So I'm here to recommend that you um, rule this bill inexpedient to legislate um, so that we can move on with our business. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, even though you asked for that, we still have to <laughs> have questions to go through the full hearing. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Representative Rung? Uh, Representative Petusek. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Rung, do you recall what the uh, House bill number was the last time we saw this two years ago? Oh, I don't even know where my car keys are, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. I, I don't remember the number. I, I did not come as prepared uh, as I normally would have introducing a bill because um, I, I'm, I'm just a subbing in for Representative Cushing. So I'm sorry, I don't. That's okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I, I keep trying to tell people all the time, I do not know bills by their numbers. I, yeah. <laughs> I have last term's bill here. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, I was a number. And that's why we have ranking members. Thank you, Representative <laughs> Bartlett. It was House Bill 1274. There you go. All right. Okay. Any other questions for her? Thank you very much, uh, Representative Rung, and uh, hope you have a good week uh, on your committee. Thank you very much. Well, I don't have a committee, but I'll have a good week oh. anyway. Thank you. <laughs> it's even better. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. In terms of who else would like to speak, I, have, I do have three other people uh who wanted to speak so um if they i don't know if they not want to speak please raise your hand okay so i got uh james tonner and david muse and michelle robert so if you three raise your hands i can move you over okay james toner is first so he gets moved over first promote to panelists okay All right. Good morning, Mr. Toner. Toner. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry about that. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Um, good morning, Chairman Hunt and members of committee. I'm James Toner. Director of Government Relations for the International Bottled Water Association. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, testifying before you on House Bill 335 and expressed concerns over the proposal uh, due to national uniformity and federal preemption. At that time, I stated that IBWA was neutral on the bill. However, given further internal and member review, IBAWA now opposes legislation for those same reasons. We believe that attempts uh, to alter regulations for bottled water testing and reporting requirements are disruptive to national uniformity and therefore are an impediment to interstate commerce. Uh, just as a quick review, EPA addresses the national regulation requirements for public and drinking water. FDA handled these for bottled water. While EPA allows a more stringent uh, contaminant levels, FDA does not. Uh, this is demonstrated based upon state oversight. While a state has ultimate oversight on drinking water within their state, they do not have the same oversight for water that is sourced outside of their borders. Uh, both EPA and FDA regulate certain contaminants based upon whether or not they determine uh, there is a threat to human health. Uh, quite often that might mean not imposing any regulation at all. Uh, in the comments I provided the committee, you can see how the FDA addressed a situation like this with regard to PFAS uh, based upon IBWA's request uh, to set a national SOQ for these contaminants. Although given that FDA uh, although given that EPA has stated they are in the process of planning for rulemaking at this time, neither agency has seen an immediate need for setting anything beyond a health advisory. Should that change, no matter what the contaminant, if EPA and FDA agree to set limits, IBWA will follow their lead. In several cases, IBWA already has stricter guidelines than those mandated by EPA or FDA. 
Two items I'd like to address that were presented in the hearing on uh, House Bill 335. First, while not all bottlers are members of IBWA and therefore might not comply with our code of practice for most of our stricter or unique standards that we have set, we have done so based upon testing of bottled water. We did not set lower limit standards, limits or standards on PFAS based upon what we were seeing in any one given state, but because we know that bottled water manufacturers are not seeing significant amounts of these contaminants in their product. Second, proponents pointed to the one instance where a company in Massachusetts provided water to a bottler that tested high for levels of PFAS. An important point to cite is that several other providers were also tested with limited traces of PFAS in their water. And that one provider faced consequences and went out of business. It is for these reasons we request that the committee not report this bill and allow for national standards to best determine contaminant mandates. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, we thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you. I Amon does have a question for you. Was your testimony about, oh, thank you, Mr. Chair, thank you for taking my question. Was your testimony about House Bill 265 or House Bill 335? Uh, well, it was for 265, today's bill, but we have to, we testified a couple of weeks ago on 335 as well. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, we thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you, uh, have a good day. Uh, Rep Representative Mingus, sorry, I should have called you first. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I uh, testified in front of the committee on HB uh, 335, and I'm just here to lend my voice uh, in support of uh, HB 265 as a co-sponsor. As Representative Rung said, it is uh, identical uh, to the previous bill, and, and I think the, the issues we face with, uh, with this bill are, are identical. Um, I think there are uh, a lot of communities, including mine in New Hampshire, that have found themselves on the on the wrong side of water contamination issues. Uh, and when that happens, people turn to bottled water. And one of the things that they, they take for granted that maybe they shouldn't take for granted is that that water um, uh, actually is less contaminated than the water that they're trying to get, uh, that, that, that they're being told not to drink. Um, this. The idea that a situation uh, like the one that occurred with the, the Spring Hill Bottling Company uh, a couple of years ago, the idea that that could occur in New Hampshire uh, is extremely bothersome, especially now that we've updated our PFAS standards. Um, so to me, uh, I think the, the biggest issue here in New Hampshire is that people actually have a way to know which bottled water they're drinking has actually met our state standards and which, which hasn't. Um, um, one way to do that would be to simply require that, the, that all bottled water uh, uh, be certified as having, having passed uh, New Hampshire standards. And that would probably be the preferable way to do it. That, that way, uh, nobody uh, would be in a position where they're drinking water that might be potentially contaminated. Uh, another way to do it might be to uh, uh, require stores to uh, to simply put water that has been tested and met, meets New Hampshire standards uh, in one area of a dis display, uh, prominently labeled, uh, the display itself, uh, and then to have another uh, section uh, for water that, that hasn't met our standards. Um, to me, the key thing is, uh, is the, the public really does have a right to know um, if water like this is tested uh, and, and, and meets our standards. Um, so I, I urge you uh, to, uh, to pass uh, one of these bills uh, and to uh, retain uh, the other. Thank you. Great. Uh, Representative Abramson has a question for you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sure. Chairman. Oops, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for taking my question. Oh, am I on mute? Nope. nope sorry, I'm still, not used, I'm still not used to this. Um, so you mentioned the uh, uh, higher New Hampshire standards. Uh, had you guys, when you worked on this, uh, worked this idea out originally, um, considered the idea of having like a, a label or a sticker or certification of some kind that uh, uh, bottled water manufacturers could put a little New Hampshire symbol on there if they met certain higher standards, something they could do voluntarily that would also maybe have a little more selling value for the uh, end consumer. 
My understanding is that was an idea that was kicked around by one of the committees. Um, the original bill uh, that we looked at, I think a couple of years ago, um, would have required posting the, the actual uh, test results on the on the bottle itself, which is a little bit different. You know, it sounds like what you were what you're talking about is something that basically just says um, certified in compliance when you know with New Hampshire standards. Um, uh, to me, that would be an acceptable idea as well. Uh, again, it's a matter of people knowing what they're drinking. Okay, fair enough. Actually, to, you know, to follow up with that question, uh, and I guess the curse of being around as long as I have or maybe it's a benefit is um, this is sort of like we had with the bovine growth hormones. And the issue was mandating that uh, labeling of the product or whether it had, whether the farmers were using bovine growth hormones. And the end result was that because enough consumers, I guess, cared or they wanted to know that whether the farmers were doing it or not, that the manufacturers put right on the little sticker, as you were saying sticker, that's what when Max said that in my mind, they started out with stickers and then they would actually put on the package. And I think even today you'll see on the package, it says, you know, no growth hormones. So, so why wouldn't it make more sense that, that this legislation, you know, wouldn't need just being devil's advocate, wouldn't need legislation if the consumers truly wanted to know whether you know uh, PFAS were in their water, wouldn't they? Wouldn't it make sense for these marketers, the bottle marketers, to put to say you know PFAS free? Uh, Mr. Cherry, I think there's there is an aspect of this where there are times when people just don't want to know, um, and and probably one of the one of those times is is when their water is contaminated and they're actually looking uh you know to bottled water as some sort of a remedy you know but I, but i do believe that there's something to the idea that if we have uh, uh if we have some sort of a label on the bottle and people can see that and they understand what it means um that could drive uh more demand uh for for water uh that's actually been certified you know to meet the standards um I'm just looking for something that will kick this off because when I go to Market Basket and when I go to Hannaford's, I have no way of knowing if any of the bottled water that I buy, and I, I do buy Poland Spring, um, I have no way of knowing if that, if that water really com, you know, uh, complies with the standards. And it's something I think that's always in the back of my mind, but you know, I'm not one of the people who was affected by the contamination at, at Pease. I'm not one of the people who was affected by Coakley. And, and I think there's a very real concern, you know, for people who've already had PFAS exposure about potentially adding anything to their bodies on top of that. Uh, because as we've all heard in testimony on all of the other PFAS bills, uh, PFAS bioaccumulates. Uh, your body actually doesn't have any good way of getting rid of it. So I think this is sort of maybe um, not a top of mind issue for people who live outside areas that are contaminated, but it's very much a top of mind issue for people who do. Okay, uh, Representative, everybody's had their question. First question, okay, Representative Abramson, is your hand still up from- Yeah, I was, no, I was trying to do a, a, a bit of a follow-up, um, if I might. Sure. Uh, so my, my thought was, oh, I guess you can't see it, but we have logos, NH logos and things like that. Maybe if there were something where we, um, if we could do this with your bill, if, if you're not objecting to it, um, have some kind of logo or label that bottlers would be allowed to, to put on if they met the higher New Hampshire standards, uh, just as a voluntary thing that the company could do. And uh, also show that New Hampshire cares about the quality of our, our, our bottled water. Well, I, I think this bill is all about water meeting the standards and, and providing consumers with a way to know about that. I'm a, I'm a co-sponsor. This is actually Representative Cushing's bill, so I'm not sure what his take would, would be on this. But, but to me, anything that moves us further down the road of consumers being informed about what they're drinking would be a good thing. Okay, Representative Petusek. Uh, I have a question for uh, Mr. Toner, if he's still uh, available. Well, he's, he's done, he's, we're all set. <laughs> you can okay. ask him. Okay. My question, okay, could be to Representative Muse. Um, does 
not all the water that is sold in the state of New Hampshire meet the national standards? We don't, we don't know. <laughs> I, some of it does. I know that there are bottlers like um, at Adnoc that, um, that actually publish uh, uh, you know their the results. You know, in terms of in terms of some some of the others, um, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, and finally, uh, uh, Michelle Roberts from from uh, DHHS. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Thank you. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Michelle Robers, and I'm the administrator of the Bureau of Public Health Protection within the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services Division of Public Health Services. Similar to our testimony for HB 335, I'm here today to provide you with some background information on New Hampshire's regulations of bottled water, and I'm also available to answer any questions that you may have pertaining to these regulations. Also with me here today is Charles Metcalf, He's the supervisor of New Hampshire's dairy sanitation and beverage and bottled water programs within the Department of Health and Human Services. HB 265 proposes to require bottled water to comply with the maximum contaminant levels in New Hampshire's Safe Drinking Water Act. The food protection section within the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services currently licenses and inspects all in-state manufacturers of bottled water and registers annually all out-of-state manufacturers of bottled water who distribute bottled water in New Hampshire. All finished bottled water products, regardless of state or country of origin, are required to meet the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's standards of quality for bottled water. And these standards are specified in 21 Code of Federal Regulations 165-110B. In order, for, in order to align with New Hampshire's drinking water standards, rulemaking has been initiated by the department to require bottled water produced or distributed in New Hampshire to meet the maximum contaminant levels for the four regulated PFAS substances and arsenic, along with uh, the FDA standards of quality. The department has reached out to stakeholders to inform them of the proposed rule revisions, and our final proposed rules are projected to be before the New Hampshire Joint Legislative Committee on Administrative Rules in June of 2021. Should this bill move forward, the department does have one suggestion to add the following language to the proposed bill to provide clarity that these requirements will only apply to bottled water offered for retail sale in New Hampshire. The department made a similar suggestion for HB 335. The, su the suggested language changes um, are on lines 26 and 27 of the legislation as follows. So in line 26, the words, we would propose to strike the words for retail sale at the very end of that line. And then in line 27, we would propose to add in uh, for retail sale in New Hampshire after the word state. So the sentence that is in lines 26 through 29 of the legislation would read, and, and the sentence begins partway through line 26 with the word all. So the sentence would now, we propose that the sentence would read, all bottled water manufactured or bottled out of state for retail sale in New Hampshire shall comply with the requirements specified in departmental rules under RSA 143-6 and maximum contaminate, contaminant levels established under RSA 485. And again, this is similar um, proposed uh, language we offered up in HB uh, 335 as well. Uh, this concludes my testimony and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. And I says, as I said earlier in my um, talking points here is that I do have Charles Metcalf that can help answer any questions as well. Is there any questions for Ms. Robert? Okay, I guess we're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, I, I don't have my calendar in front of me. Did we say we were going to start our exec session at 930 or did we not give any time? Yeah. Okay. 915, I believe. Um, I think it says nine. Well, you're right. It's 915. Okay. 915. okay, so we're good. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we'll close the public hearing on... House Bill 265.
and we will open up our executive session. And, um, so I am going through it as is listed in the calendar, which is numeric order. So first up is uh, House Bill 65 and Representative Rung's bill, uh, Rachel's Law, and Representative Patusek, uh, seconded uh, by Representative Osborne, moves uh, to retain Rachel's Law. And Representative Patusek, uh, would you like to speak to your motion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I believe that this is a work in progress and there is more information that uh, we need to um, get. So I move that we retain this for more work. Okay, uh, Representative Van Houten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, while I understand that um, many things are work in progress, there are many immediacies that we have to look at. This is a bill that, it, that stems from the unnecessary death of a young lady and probably has impacted many, many lives. Uh, on that basis and, and on the basis of the need of the people going forward, I do believe that we should not retain this bill, that an auto pass recommendation would be much fairer to our constituents and much fairer to the health of our con constituents. Thank you. Uh, Representative Bartlett. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm a little curious um, about um, Representative Butuchik saying we need more information. I mean, we've had two years of this. We passed it um, overwhelmingly last year. We had lots of testimony this year. And um, I do think we want to pass this. OK. Representative Fargo. Uh, I just want to reiterate what both of my colleagues have said. You know, we did pass this last term. This is an important bill. Um, continuing to push it out is not helping anyone. I think that uh, we need to move forward. We need to pass this bill. Okay. Any more discussion on the motion to retain House Bill 65? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Paul, sorry, Representative Terry. <laughs> Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. No, sorry. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. And Representative McAleer. No. And me. And lastly, <laughs> Representative Hump. Yes. Okay, that's 10 to nine. Okay, motion passes. And that's uh, because it's just being retained. There's no um, majority or minority report. Okay, House Bill 92, uh, studying regulated animal groomers. Um, Representative Greeson, uh, seconded uh, by Representative Osborne, retain <coughs> House Bill 92. Is there Representative uh, Greeson, you recognize to speak to your motion? Okay, uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, statements, a lot of anecdotes mostly, uh, and, and mostly centered around one or two examples. Uh, and what we were looking at doing is maybe amending this to make it a two-year commission, if I remember correctly, uh, that was a, a proposal to do. It's mostly an unregulated business. And so um, 
just trying to retain this to to make sure that we are actually obtaining what we're seeking to accomplish with this type of bill uh, because it, it is such an unregulated business. If I if, just trying to go back and remember, I've got all my notes here, but uh, uh, trying to find what's relevant to it. But if we retain it, we can at least make a better bill out of it. Right. To, you know, a commission uh, and deciding who's the commission going to study, study yeah. and have it go for a couple of years would probably make the most sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Representative Bartlett, your hand is up first. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, the, we also agree that this um, looks like there's a real need uh, for more study on this. Um, and we would agree to a, a, a two-year commission would be a, a good idea with the, the various stakeholders to be represented. Yeah. So we would go along with retain. Okay. Uh, Representative Abramson. Um, I've also got to agree with Representative Bart, uh, Bartlett and Greeson. Um, I wanted to go obviously in a different direction ultimately with the bill, but I think either way the retain motion I think is, is the right way to go. Great. Uh, seeing no more discussion on the motion, uh, the clerk will call the roll on retaining House Bill 92. And that was moved by Representative Greeson yeah. and seconded by Representative Patusek. Is that correct? Uh, sure. Yep. <laughs> I think all I right. said Osborne, but that's all right. <laughs> you said who? Who I'm sorry? I said Osborne, but that's yeah. Patusek is good. Okay, I'll, I can change it. You're just trying to keep up with all these forms here. Yeah, I understand. All right, motion is retained on House Bill 92. Uh, Representative Patusek. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Yes. Representative Hunt. Yes. Okay, that's 19 to zero. Motion passes. Okay. And just um, briefly, Mr. Chairman, I want to point out that we, we have lost power here um, at the LOB, and that's why the room has been knocked out. You, you don't see the committee room anymore, but luckily nobody's in it. So <laughs> thanks, proceed. And I just wanted to, you know, so, so far I'm in the office and I still have power up here somehow but um, they're trying to restore the room. And, and if something should happen, that could be the explanation. If, but if, you know, since you're a co-host, you're, you're still carrying the meeting. So okay. we'll great. See what happens. Amazing. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up is House Bill 162, uh, the Spirits and Farmers Market. Uh, Representative Patusek, uh, second in, uh, by Representative Osborne moves to uh, retain. House Bill 162 and Representative Patusek is recognized to speak to his motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 162, permitting tastings by liquor manufacturers at farmers markets for distilled spirits. What it does is uh, amends the present bill to include distilled spirits on top of wine and beer. There is also a uh, a couple of amendments, one of which you, you already have, one which has not uh, been submitted yet. And uh, we know that there is another bill coming over from the Senate, which is virtually the same thing as this one, but it will not have the additional amendment that I already have sitting in my back pocket. No, so it, will, to, it will be already amended. It will already come over amended with the amendment that we have, which is... Uh, 526H, which is the same one we just got, but I have one in my back pocket, which I will be amending uh, when we come back to this uh, later. So I move that we retain 
uh, because it's not done yet. Okay. Any more discussion on the retaining motion? Yes, Representative Bartlett. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, I think that um, we're anxious to see um, how the amended bill gets through the Senate. Um, it's the same bill. Um, I, I think retain makes sense. Okay, Representative Van Houten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am the author of 0526H, the amendment to which Representative Patusik um, referred, and I'm not sure how that would be different in the Senate bill. So although, um, although I think this is fine as is, and I believe the amendment is just tweak the language. This was just a mat matter of tweaking language rather than tweaking the concept. Um, I will vote retain, um, hoping that um, the Senate bill comes over in fine form or that we get a chance to amend it. Thank you. Okay. All right, have any no more discussion on the retain motion? Um, the clerk will call the roll. Okay, retain on House Bill 162. Yep. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Oh, I'm sorry. I was still on mute. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Representative Herbert. <clears throat> yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Yes. Representative Hunt. Yes. 19 to zero. Okay. Um, all those in favor, uh, I'll get you to this retain, right? Um, or I'm sorry, I <laughs> lost my place. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's the retain bills. Uh, so um, next up is House Bill 171, which is, will, will be a, a real vote. Uh, Representative Patusek, uh, seconded by Representative Osborne, uh, moves ought to pass. And Representative Patusek is recognized to speak to his motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's, it's unusual that I get to speak on two bills consecutively. Um, House Bill 171, relative to food in cigar shops. Uh, this bill provides snacks for those who are in cigar bars who are smoking their cigars and perhaps imbibing in uh, some type of beverage. Uh, everyone, I believe, agrees that if you're going to imbibe in some kind of beverage, it's good to have something in your stomach. So this bill would provide that at uh, no additional cost and uh, does not allow sale, which means these must be provided uh, free of charge, which works for me because I'm cheap. And uh, I believe it's a good bill. And uh, even the uh, Liquor Administration agrees that it would be good for uh, them and it's good for business. And I'm pro small business. So I move that we, uh, OTP this bill. Okay, Representative Van Houten. No. No. Sorry, I failed to lower my hand. I apologize. And Representative Bartlett. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, this is a, a bill that came over last year and that we supported. It was lost in the um, COVID um, <laughs> issues. So I think that. Uh, what Representative Patuchik said, it's a good idea to allow uh, people that are going to be um, drinking liquor to also have um, food in their stomach. There is no retail sales um, for this, no charge for it. So um, I, I think it um, would be good to OTP. Okay. Um, any more discussions? None. Uh, the clerk will call the roll 
on ought to pass on House Bill 171. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Hout. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Yes. And Representative Hunt. Yes. 19 to zero. Okay, all those in favor of placing House Bill 171 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. Okay, next up, uh, House Bill 176, relative to on-premise delivery. And um, I, I will move to uh, retain this, this bill, uh, seconded by Representative Patusek. Um, the, we, again, this is another Senate bill that's coming over. It's hotly contested in the Senate and they're working on it. Um, I believe the, the department has got a resolution. Um, so rather than trying to amend this bill, um, my fear is always that, um, that something could get lost in the wash <laughs> or the COVID shuffle. And so uh, by retaining it, at least we can have it uh, come September and make sure it's, if, if there's a problem, we can at least get it passed in January. So, but I'm hoping everything is gonna go smoothly. So we won't really need this bill. Uh, Representative Bartlett. Thanks Mr. Chair. And um, I would concur that um, we will hope that um, the bill that is making its way through with um, some work um, will meet our, our expectations so retain makes sense. Right. Okay, any more discussion on the motion to retain House Bill 176? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. And that was uh, moved Hunt by- and, Hunt and Patusek. Hunt and Patusek, yeah. Almost there. I see the committee's back up. Yes, we are restored. <laughs> All right, retain on House Bill 176, Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Sorry. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Johnson. Uh, sorry, Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Yes. Representative Hunt. Yes. 19 to zero. Okay, all those in favor of placing uh, one. This is retained, so. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, this is retained. Never mind, never mind, okay. Uh, House Bill 207, uh, repealing moving company statute. Uh, Representative Johnson, seconded by Representative Patusik, uh, moves to retain uh, House Bill 207. And Representative Johnson is recognized to speak to our motion. I just think this bill needs some work. It's not just needs work. <laughs> well, clearly that there were some issues, uh, whether we actually really want to repeal it is another story, but there were definitely some issues with the current statute that right. probably be cleaned up. Representative Fargo, I hear you've been doing some homework on this bill. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's a whole lot to work with here. <laughs> I would like to see it ITL. This is um, repealing this. The reason we we're here is because we represent consumers, and this is a consumer protection bill and or law. And what it does is it protects people from moving companies, charging them, you know, taking their goods for hostage, changing prices. Um, it it protects people from um, companies that discriminate against peoples or localities. I mean, I see the importance of this bill and repealing it to me. I, I just don't feel good about that. And I think we should ITL. But as, as you might remember, there was that thing about where they had to make a statement about how they were worthy to be driving on the state highways. Don't you think we should get rid of that? I don't see that it's a problem. Okay, fair enough. Representative Bartlett. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I am looking at the blue sheet, however. I mean, I, I agree that the um, those who were testifying didn't do a particularly good job in informing the committee um, with what the issues are, but I do think we need to keep looking at it. And we had seven in support um, of, of repealing, but um, one that opposed it. And I, uh, I, I have a hard time wanting to repeal it without knowing more about it. Um, so I do understand the retain part of it, um, but I'm inclined to to not support, I mean, to not support this motion of, I mean, sorry, to not support the retain. I think I'd rather just rather kill it, but that's sort of where I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Representative Van Houten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's obvious from the previous testimony here in the exec and from the testimony at the hearing that there's just too much going on in this bill. We've not been able to give it adequate time, and I don't think we can give it adequate time given the number of bills that may are likely to be retained uh, for the fall. Uh, this bill probably needs a total reworking and a total uh, parsing out of its ind individual parts. Therefore, I believe ITL is the fairest thing to do unless we can give it do an adequate time in order to rectify something that is inherently um, flawed in many ways. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So the motion is to retain. The clerk will call the roll. Retain 207. Oh, Van's got it there. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo? No. Representative Weston? No. Representative Bellew? No. Representative Burroughs? No. Representative McAleer? No. And Representative Hunts? Yes. That's 10 to 9, the motion passes. Okay. All right. Next up is uh, House Bill 245. Representative Johnson, seconded by Representative Patusek, uh, moves to retain House Bill 245, and she is recognized to speak to her motion. Hi. So this one, I think we need to work so that we can try to include the um, prepay, uh, the pre-made, Food so people can get that and have that included in the total number and maybe, you know, I think that would be a lot better. We can actually get some revenue out of it. They can include those pieces into it. So I think we should retain it to try to make it work better for everybody. 
So, Representative Johns, do you mind turning your computer down a little bit? We just like to see all of you. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Okay, uh, Representative Fargo. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we should ITL this bill. I, I see there's a value in small neighborhoods for seniors and folks without cars to be able to get groceries within their own communities. And um, I just, even the Liquor Commission did not see this as necessary. And I, I think we, we don't want to have a lot of neighborhood liquor stores. Um, I just, I don't see the value in this bill at all. And I, I would ITL this. So I'm, I'm gonna have to vote against the retain. Fair enough. Representative Abramson. So this was my bill and it, it's, it's created to deal with a uh, problem. I agree with the retain motion because uh, we had a lot of different members with different opinions on what should be done ultimately with the bill. Um, and it's an, an intended to deal with a pretty large number of convenience stores around the state that have to stock what at least in Seabrook are dusty cans of spam and $8 boxes of Cheerios and condensed milk. And when we go to the shelves and you run your finger along the top, it's obvious that this $3,000 in inventory is not selling in some of these stores. And they tell us that, that they almost never sell any of this stuff and they don't want to sell any of this stuff because it's just damned inconvenient to keep it around. So different members of the committee um, wanted to do different things. So I think that the retain motion is probably uh, appropriate. Representative Greeson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the emphasis or, or the, the use of the term convenience stores uh, I think is part of the problem that we we're looking at here. When you think of a convenience store, it's uh, it's the uh, the 7-Eleven type stores. Uh, but the stores that this bill would affect are stores where the emphasis, the the sales emphasis or the draw to the store is not uh, small food items. It's actually the alcohol, the the cigarettes, the tobacco products, whatever, um, and that sort. So if the food that is being sold in those stores is something that's, that's required by law uh, to be added to the inventory uh, of the store. And so um, it, the, the, the person who's going into the store is really not there to buy food. The emphasis is not food. It's just they have to have food to get their license. The, uh, what's being talked about is being uh, uh, to, to tweak the bill uh, and, and support for retaining it to be able to add it to it would just be a, a allow for food service to be added, to be included in that $3,000 so that it is actually sales and the added benefit of uh, the, meals, uh, the meals tax that would get applied to it, which, which otherwise would not be because of, the, of regular grocery sales. So I think retaining it allows us to actually do something that would, uh, again, it's it, this, the current, the stores that are affected by this are not food stores. They're just required to sell food with the alcohol. So this would allow them to be able to actually sell something. Representative Burroughs. You muted. Uh, sorry, muted. I was. I, sorry, I thought I had unmuted. Yeah, I would just argue that um, spam and dusty Cheerios may not actually be considered food, particularly the spam part, and that uh, I think grocery of these stores have a, have the ability to sell to buy anything that will sell, and there's no reason for them to have items on the on the shelves that nobody will buy. So for that reason, um, I, I I'm not going to support retaining. <laughs> I did not see that going that way. So unfortunately, spam is considered a canned food, much like tuna. So, but uh, Representative Bilo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I have the definition of a convenience store here, which is a, a store with extended opening hours in a convenient location stocking a limited, limited range of household goods and groceries. Um, what I believe um, some representatives are talking about are liquor stores, because if you want to be able to just sell beer and wine, and that is, you know, what you're going to be selling there, um, that's a liquor store. So I am going to ITL this bill. Okay. 
All right, just so I guess I, the way I perceive the situation is that I, uh, I understand, Representative Bilo, you're worried about package stores that they're in other states. Because when you say liquor store in New Hampshire, it means something totally different, obviously. Um, but no, I think the, uh, the discussion point was uh, that um, we have this $3,000 food requirement and we're, uh, and, I, and I believe, uh, but I know for a fact that the uh, chief of enforcer, uh, uh, he, he agreed uh, with me when I said, wouldn't it make sense that food that you could actually eat right then and there like a food service kind of type, type you know, and those meals, um, wouldn't that actually better for, to uh, fulfill the food requirement? And he agreed. So that's, uh, for that reason, uh, retaining it makes a lot of sense. Representative Bartlett. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I have to oppose this this motion. Um, I, I just don't, do not think there's a, a way to amend this um, and to spend more time on it with an awful lot of bills we're retaining um, and I'm I'm going to um, oppose the motion. Fair enough. Okay. Any more discussion on the motion of uh, retaining House Bill 245? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Hammond. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Representative Ham. Yes, yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. Yes, I like the idea of uh, giving them some flexibility in serving food to eat. Representative Van Houten. No, that's a restaurant. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. Absolutely not. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. Yes. Representative Hunt. Yes. Okay, the retained motion carries and uh, 1227. Yeah. Okay, next up is House Bill 264. Representative Abramson, second by Representative Patusek, moves to retain House Bill 264. Representative Abramson is recognized to speak to his motion. Did you say 274? 264. Oh, 264. Um, yeah, I thought that, that the need was to retain this um, disclaimer. I'm a Republican and we like to save money and we like to shop around. Um, I thought that the idea behind uh, this bill was that you would go to a, a doctor's office or a hospital or, 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 or any medical provider. And when you're, when you're calling around, you want to get an estimate, just like when you're trying to do car work or, or buy insurance or anything else. I thought I, I felt that that was the idea that Representative McLean was was promoting. Um, I thought that that was uh, good, but the sponsor admitted that there may, under kind of cross examination, that there may be some issues with the language of the bill, uh, but that there wasn't anything uh, structurally wrong, and that we may be able to just clean up the language a bit and maybe get something uh, good out of this. So that's why I thought it needed to be retained. Uh, Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't know if there's, there's any way that the testimony that we all heard um, is going to, that you're going to be able to, to so-called clean up this bill. Um, there are so many different ways that the um, healthcare costs are figured. Um, there is no retail cost per se, uh, whether it's Medicare, whether it's Medicaid, whether it's private insurance. Um, I just don't think there's, there's, we can put the effort in to make this fit everybody. Um, and that's what the law is supposed to do. Um, I, I cannot support the retain. Uh, okay, did we just lose Representative De Palma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> 
So I guess we have wind wind problem. Wind. Yeah, it's blowing here. That's for sure. In Plymouth, he's in Plymouth, right? Oh, he's in Plymouth. I still have power. Yeah. Huh. Okay, uh, Representative Fargo. Um. Yeah, I listened to what Paula Minahan had to say. The feds passed the transparency regulation. Um, in 2019, that's effective January 1st. That's going to solve a lot of this. Um, I just, I don't see a need for this bill. There's too much work to make it even a viable. I, I just, I think there are other bills that probably would warrant the work before this one. So I would, I can't, I'd like to ITL this one. Okay, Representative Burroughs. Yes, thank you. Um, I was just going to just going to add that um, most doctors um, don't have access to the information that would be required um, to, to fulfill this requirement. Uh, most doctors don't know the codes um, that are used by insurance company. They don't know the monetary value of the code. So for that reason, I'm going to vote ITL. Okay. Uh, Representative Bartlett. Thank you. I think um, Representative McAleer is trying to get your attention too, but he didn't hit the raise your hand button. I, I, I can't find that one. Oh, it's um, look on the bottom screen, look on the bottom and just touch the bottom where the taskbar is and there should be a, a reactions and you can raise your hand there. But anyway. At, at, at any rate, I, I don't think this bill is workable at all. I, I think that uh, it would take a clairvoyant to uh, actually come up with an answer that's even close to an estimate. I, I just don't think it's workable. And I'll, I vote ITL. Uh, Representative Barlett, now you have a question. <laughs> Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. In addition, <clears throat> Paula Minahan um, testified that this wouldn't apply to private doctor's office. Um, Tyler Brennan came to us from the insurance department. There's already um, a place on the website that gives you a rough idea of what costs are um, from various hospitals or various um, some service providers. But to put the work into this, there's just, I don't believe there's any way you're going to be able to, to fashion a bill that is going to meet the, the goal of, of the uh, sponsor. So I, 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 I have to vote ITL. Representative Abramson. Uh, one of the ideas that was brought up at the hearing was that perhaps the hospital or uh, clinic or service provider might just provide the information that they have present at that time. Um, so but we would have to discuss that and, and, and uh, question and challenge that and see is, is that beneficial or not? Or is that necessary? Are there other ways to do it? Um, and that's why retaining just makes more sense. Representative Patusek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, like uh, Representative Abramson, I believe there is more information to be gotten. Um, and I also agree that, yes, there are standardized type of uh, tables available on the internet that would give you a rough idea. But I think if uh, the sponsor would come back with some more information would make this a more workable bill. Thank you, sir. Representative Abel. Uh, I, see that, I see this as we have two choices. We can give this a quick death now, or we can let it die uh, in the fall. And so I am for ITL. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, any more discussion on the motion of retaining 264? Uh, seeing none, would you got you two, uh, John and Rich, can you put your hands down? That'd be great. Uh, and uh, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. <clears throat> yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. 
No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. No. Representative Hunt. Yes. That's 10 to nine. Okay. Moving on. Um, uh, next I have on my list uh, is actually House Bill 265 was technically not on the uh, list for bills to be exec today. Um, and it is normally not my personality to ever kill a bill or pass a bill on the same day we heard it. Um, I always thought that every bill should get 24 hours of life. However, this we have this ad uh, different awkward situation because we have another bill related to it. So um, I guess uh, uh, how the, how does the committee feel? Is there anybody has a problem for us taking up this bill now? Actually, Mr. Chairman, it wasn't listed in the calendar. No, it wasn't listed in the calendar, but because we heard it today. Oh, you could. Okay, you're right. Rules so that you can. But just you list so many of them. I thought you. <laughs> so this is so into, in, you know, this is so what I would ever do. But yeah, Representative Bartlett. Um, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, no, I have spoken with the sponsors on this, and they understood our position, um, and I'm I'm fine with with executing it now. But for the record, I would never do this. Uh, you know, generally, I, I we understand. It's it, we're, we'll definitely keep you on the record. <laughs> <laughs> Not my personality to do something like this, but okay. Uh, Representative Abramson, uh, seconded by Representative Batusek, uh, moves uh, inexpedient to legislate. And Representative Abramson is recognized to speak to his motion. Um, so um, I like the idea of the bill, but uh, we already have House Bill 335 that we're, that, uh, we're proposing to retain. So uh, it's nothing personal, but this is exactly the same as uh, 335. So as the uh, as the introducer suggested, uh, first thing um, I move that we ITL this bill and work on three thirty five instead. Um, okay. Just to be clear, the the person who introduced um, Representative Rung is a co sponsor. Co sponsor. Good. Okay. Any more discussion on the motion of inexpedient to legislate on House Bill two sixty five? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Representative yes. Johnson. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative McAleer. There. Oh, he froze. He froze. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely frozen. <laughs> Representative uh, Hunt? You can come back. Oh, that's right. So, um, yeah, yes. Okay, that's 18 to zero. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, next one, we shouldn't have to. I think we're okay. Excuse me, is that going to be on consent? Oh, yes. All those in favor of saying, placing uh, 265 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. Okay. 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 Um, okay, so let's take up the next one. I think we'll be all right. Um, House Bill 299. Uh, Representative Patusek, uh, seconded by Representative Bartlett, moves uh, uh, to pass. So, uh, Representative Patusek is recognized to speak to his motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, plain and simply, this bill clarifies certain responsibilities and responsibilities of the insurance department and was requested by the insurance department. It has a melange of 
uh, pieces of information that fix, clean up, update uh, a lot of uh, the insurance laws. And I therefore move to uh, OTP. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion we're about to pass? All right. Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Just need one one second here. Um, that was Patu six second by Bartlett. Yes. On to pass. Yeah. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Representative Burroughs. Mm, I don't see her either. No, it looks like she's gone too. Oh, Dropping like flies. <laughs> Representative McAleer. So he's still gone. McAleer and Representative Hunt. Yes. That's 17 to 0, Mr. Chair. All right. All those in favor of placing House Bill 299 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. Okay. Uh, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if we should put some kind of a disclaimer about, about today and the weather. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if I come up uh, missing soon. It is. The wind is blowing yeah. so ferociously that I, I feel and, and hear it unbelievably out there. Yeah, so I, I, may, I may lose electricity. I'm not sure. I just lost mine for a few minutes and dropped out, so I might. Okay, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a power loss then. So, so some of Plymouth loses power and some does not. Amazing. I mean, I'm sure that um, reps um, McAleer and Burroughs are trying to get back in. Right. As soon as they can, with even if it's just by phone, we can we can live with that, can't we, Mr. Chair? <laughs> yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> To do that. Well, as long as we recognize their voice. <laughs> um, and, and, and I would have to write down the phone number just in case that happens. I'm going to have to look it up and write it down because I won't have access to, yeah. to the, uh, the, yeah, the computer counter. anyway. Doesn't it violate house rules if we're not on video? Yeah, that's a. And <laughs> house rules say we have to be on video. We have to see faces. Uh, Representative Osborne. Uh, yes, we do have rules that we need to follow. Uh, however, um, would it be appropriate to um, make a, a gentle lady and gentleman's agreement that if someone on one side is to drop off, someone on the other side will take a walk? Uh, right. Well, this uh, the Senate calls this pairing. Uh, mm -hmm. and because of the 24 of them, they would do that if someone was unable to participate, uh, someone else would not participate. Uh, so, I don't know. How do you, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I, I'm willing to do that if everyone else is. I, I think that would be a good thing. Yeah, because there's, we have no control over, you know, who it is that's going to get dropped off. It could happen to any of us. I mean, otherwise, what will happen is if the vote goes awry, then uh, tomorrow when we come back, we're going to have to go through a bunch of reconsideration motions, and that's not going to be good for anybody. Exactly. Um, okay, Representative Abramson, you had your hand I up. I, I actually disagree with that. If, if that were to happen, um, you know, I would honestly rather do reconsideration. But as far as the rules are concerned, the rules of the House, we're no longer Republicans and Democrats. And if some, I, I, I don't like doing the Zoom uh, meetings at all. I would rather read, meet in the LOB. Um, I, but I've already stated that issue uh, earlier. And uh, 
as, as far as the house rules are concerned, if you're a member, you're here. If you, if, if, if somebody drops out, um, I, I think that we could do, if they can come back on later today, we could just do the reconsideration or the chair can just hold the vote up until the end of the day. If it's really, you know, if we lose too many members. Okay. So, well, that, that's uh, representative Terry. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm okay with this as long as the reasons uh, are spread on the minutes as to why each member uh, did not participate. For example, if I were to pair, even though I'm present, somebody couldn't come back at me and say, you know, why didn't you vote on that bill? Uh, why did you take a walk on that bill? And I'm not going to remember. So um, can you assure us that the reasons will be spread on the, uh, in the minutes of the meeting indicating that somebody wasn't there because their power was lost and somebody else graciously dropped out in order to pair. Um, so on the form, there's a not voting column. I could put uh, a note in that column, but that's about it. There's, we're, we're really not taking minutes other than the votes on this. Meeting. Well, as long as it's recorded. I, but I'd have to tell you that I'm, the, the worst panic in my mind is that uh, that we send some bill out on the floor at, with a 10, 10, you know, or nine, nine vote. I mean, that I, I hope I don't, I've never wanted my committees to ever have a, a split decision go to the house floor. Um, but, so I would probably do everything possible to avoid that, but yet you're right. We can reconsider. Um, but then I am the chair so I can control which bill we take up next. Uh, and even though I said I would take them in numeric order, um, I certainly can be conscious of, of which ones we take up and what order we take them up in um, and hope that uh, these other people. I, I have texted both of them to see if there's a way they can resume in, in by phone, but um, I haven't heard back from either of them. So I don't know if they don't have phone either. Not supposed to do by phone, unfortunately. So, I know. So unless they have a smart smartphone, um, then can log we have in. smartphones. Right. So if they have they have smartphones, they can log in with their phones. Um, so uh, I, download the download the Zoom app and log in by the link. Right. Right. And, it evidently doesn't take up a lot. So okay. Do it. Yeah. So okay. Um, Anita Burroughs just wrote back. She they have lost power, no. and she's going to try to get in by phone. Is no. here. Okay. Uh, yeah, Representative. Oh, Osborne. there she is. Okay. Seems like we're wasting more time uh, in the interest of saving time. So, uh, do, you, do you think we should uh, just do the the bills that are uh, you know are going to be unanimous and uh, save the other ones till tomorrow since we're meeting anyway? Um, we, uh, we can certainly, certainly go through that. I, I, I'm not sure how much we're going to be unanimous, but we'll, but I, I guess, um, if you, uh, indulge me in talking, uh, well, we're trying to exec some bills and the lights are going, whoops. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so the next up is a uh, banking department bill. So I assume we, uh, it's going to be not the first one up is the, the vehicle, uh, repair bill. Um, I assume that's going to be a, a split decision. So, no. Um, no, we're okay with that one. No, we're okay with that one. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, Representative Ham, seconded by Representative Patusek, moves uh, in expedient to legislate in House Bill 310. And Representative Ham is recognized to speak to her motion. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recommend um, in expedient to legislate on House Bill 310, the vehicle repair bill. Um, for a variety of reasons, I, I do not think there's sufficient evidence that consumers, uh, insurance companies, adjusters, vehicle repair shops, um, auto dealers, and all the parties involved um, can't come to a, a reasonable decision um, to accommodate a safe repair uh, to the vehicle to um, pre-loss condition, um, taking advantage of, um, of manufactured parts, um, off market parts or whatever. It seems to be working. I don't think it's needed. I don't think there's enough uh, evidence that unsafe vehicles are coming out of uh, repair shops and or consumers are losing their ability to negotiate uh, for the uh, repairs that they feel necessary to their vehicle. Okay, Representative Bartlett. 
Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Um, coming from the insurance um, side of things in, in my career, um, I don't, I, I have to oppose this bill. I don't believe that um, insurance companies are authorizing unsafe repairs. Um, we also on our blue sheets had 14 opposed to this bill with five in favor. Um, just bringing that up um, that those that, that were interested in the, in the issue. Um, and I just don't think that we heard, um, as I agree with Representative Ham, I don't believe that we heard testimony that this is an issue that is um, coming up on a regular basis. Okay, Representative Abramson. So I agree with the ITL motion, um, even though I, I recognize that there's a problem that the bill is trying to solve. Um, I felt that there were structural issues with the way that the, the bill is worked out and the way it would operate. I didn't think, uh, I don't believe that we can solve structural problems within the, in the committee. We can deal with typos and language issues and small, small things, but I think that the, the sponsors would have to go back to the stakeholders and come up with a different solution to the problem. So that's why I didn't think that, that retaining would, I didn't think that we could fix the problem internally. Okay, any more discussion on the motion of any speeding to legislate on House Bill 310? Seeing none, uh, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abrams. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Um, Mr. Chair, I did get a Representative, text. Representative Hunt. Yes. Uh, yes. So 18 to zero. All those in favor of placing on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. So Representative Bartlett, did you get I, hold of? Uh, yes, he has um, He has no internet or electricity. He's tried to come in on the phone and he wants to know if he can um, communicate that way. And I told him it had to be Zoom. Okay. It had to be Zoom. That's correct answer, but unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, all right. All right. We got another easy one here. Okay. House Bill 312. Uh, 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 Representative Hunt, second by Representative Patusek, uh, moves um, ought to pass with an amendment. We have the amendment. Um, is, is that your amendment, Connie? Is that the one we have? Yes, it's my amendment. Uh, very briefly, the, the amendment simply clears up a, a grammatical issue. There had been a parallel construction throughout, and one area had not been fixed up. Uh, it was promulgated a bit ago. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? Okay. Seeing none, uh, the clerk will call the roll on not to pass on the amendment. So the motion is all to pass as amended or no, on the amendment? On the amendment. All right, you give me one second. I wasn't expecting this. Is this amendment what, what, 0093? Yeah. Amendment number is again? 0093H. Thank you, Pam. All right, all to pass on 0093H. Representative Patusik. Uh, this is on the amendment and I vote yes. I'm confused. It, you're voting yes on the bill and the amendment? No, he's voting uh, the amendment. Uh, point yes. of order, Mr. Chairman, what are we voting on? We're voting on the amendment right now. On the amendment, thank you. Uh, 93H. Your vote is yes, correct? It is yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. 
Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. 18 to zero. Okay, 18, amendment passes 18 to zip. Uh, uh, Representative Hunt, seconded by Representative Van Houten, uh, moves ought to pass as amended. One, one second, please. That was the amendment. Still hear those dings. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to find out who designed these forms and, and uh, <laughs> how to talk with them. Email dings off. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. Poor Representative Meckley is trying so hard to get in, but he can't. As amended. Can't get in on his phone. And moved by, who is it moved by again? Is it uh, same as before? Hunt. Uh, yes, Hunt and Ben Houghton. Let's, let's Connie, you want to write the blurb for it? You want to write? <laughs> say, say that again. I, I was, I had my sound muted because of the dings. Yeah. Hunt and Ben It was moved Houghton. by Hunt. Hunt and Ben Houghton. And Van Houten, same as the amendment, correct? Yeah. See, this is where the old paper one was just fine, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Diesel man. That's 312. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, uh, the discussion on the motion is that this is the banking department's uh, bill and uh, I think we've gone over it pretty well. And so it's ready to go. Ready to uh, go. Ready to go. All right, so uh, the, the motion is ought to pass on, on 312. I'll, I'll to pass as amended, right? As amended. Uh, Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Representative Bartlett. You're, you're muted. Sorry, I'm. Oh, you just muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> Going back and forth with um, Representative McAleer here. Yes. Yeah. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. And Representative Hunt. Yes. That's, excuse me, 18 to zero. Okay, 18 to zip. All those in favor of placing on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? I assume, Tina, your, your hand up is. Yeah, Mr. Chair, could we just take like a five minute break? Uh, sure. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go into recess till uh, 1035. And Mr. Chairman, whoop, can you just tell me what that last vote was? I was interrupted over here and missed the. Uh, 
bill number and motion and everything. Yeah, 18 to zero, uh, ought to pass as amended Hunt and Van Helm. Oh, just the, you're still on 312, okay. Yeah. I thought you, I had missed a, a bill. Thanks. Right. No, oh, because we had the amendment, so we were delayed a little bit. We just took a vote on as amended, so yeah. we're done with 312, right? We're done with 312. Yes. Right. Okay. Next up is 333. And hopefully, I hope I can get, get up in the next five minutes. Um, I sent, um, Representative um, Burroughs said that he could come over to her house, and he's only five minutes away. So I texted him that, but he wrote back OTP 312. <laughs> so I'm not sure he's getting my texts on a timely basis. Anita, are you back up? Are you? Are you yeah, I'm up. We did lose power. So I'm on as long as my, I have two computers, so I should be okay. I'll call Chris to see if he wants to come over. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm texting as fast as I can and keeping up with things. <laughs> but maybe I'll go get a glass of tea. Good idea. All right, well, I think we're doing pretty good. We're a third way through. So I think we're doing okay here. If we lose power here, I'm down for the count. I don't even have cell reception. <laughs> Uh, Representative Hunt? Yes. Um, I have a problem with Representative Abramson's uh, backdrop. I think it's offensive. You know, I, just... I was that, that myself today was that I would uh, tell him that um, I think, you know, I mean, we don't really have any rules about it, but anything that's got words in it is probably inappropriate, but I don't know. Having... I think the shadow is pretty offensive. I don't know if you've seen the shadow, but. Well, I guess I wasn't paying attention to the shadow. Uh huh. Was it? it wasn't there the other day. It is today. So really? just I I just. Well, he has just a different, to, different yeah. it's a different picture than you yeah, had previously. Yeah. Thank you. By the way, Chris is going to get on the phone. He doesn't want to come over because I don't know. He's just a fire going, and he's concerned leaving it alone. And uh, so he's got. He said he's going to be listening in. Yeah, but he can't vote under the house. I, I invited him over. <laughs> That's all I can say. Does he? Um, so he tried to get in on his smartphone. And he and doesn't have power, and he has no internet. I don't have power, but again, I I have enough internet, I think, to keep me going through the hearing. On your phone? No, I'm on the computer. I got back on my computer. Oh, it's charged. My computer's fully charged. Yeah. So, but how are you getting your internet then? On your phone. It's the heck out of me, but I don't have power. But I mean, you know. It's it's a uh, wireless. Uh, okay, uh, you might be on your neighbors. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, they blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> they figured out I was using it. They blocked me. <laughs> oh, Just try to get on to Zoom on his telephone. He, he should be able to. I I know I've done that before. Yeah, I I think he's a little technically challenged. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thanks, John, for giving us just a few minutes. <laughs> oh, I, 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 um, this is, works yeah. for me. <laughs> okay, ten thirty-five. So I guess we're ready to start up again. All right. Uh, next up is House Bill three thirty-three. Um. So I, I, I get people should be I'm supposed to see their face when we make the motion or just when they vote. <laughs> uh, this is a contemplate this one. Uh, so, so for those of you who are we can't see your face, do you mind turning your cam videos on so that we can? Pick up. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all right. This is well. Let's see. The next one is Averson. To Max, are you there? Hello. Yeah, just getting uh, back. Okay. All right. Rich is up. Okay. And hopefully, Connie, you're not too far away and you can hear me. All right. Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, Representative Abramson, represent, uh, seconded by Representative Patusik, move um, uh, to retain House Bill 333. And Representative Abramson is recognized to speak to his motion. Uh, so members uh, disagreed, apparently disagreed based on the questioning, both during uh, 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 the hearing and afterwards about where we wanted to go with the bill. So it didn't look like it was possible to come up with an amendment before the executive session. Uh, and for that reason, uh, because this touches on a lot of different issues and requires a little bit more research on uh, uh, what federal issues are and what other states are doing, um, I felt that we needed to retain this bill um, and and kind of reopen reopen that whole can of worms. <laughs> okay, Representative Fargo. Um, yeah, I, I I think that there's some merit. We need to look closer at this. I don't think this bill is ready for prime time as it stands, but um, I I I do think this is something that we need to spend some time looking into. Fair enough. Representative Bilo. Sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I'm going to um, I, I look to over, um, ITL this bill because I think it is um, a bill for special uh, interest groups. Thank you. Representative Abel. Yes, I, I agree. Um, I uh, don't uh, understand this and without medical advice as to what to, uh, as to uh, the usefulness of this product, um, I, I could not vote for it. So I, I'm in favor of ITL. Representative Bartlett. You're still muted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Bolio says that um, this is for special interests. And I I think that's who was testifying for us. I think that if we do retain this, I think we really need DHHS to determine where they stand on this. Um, they've testified in the past, because we had this bill, I think it was two years or three years ago, um, where it was changing the classification. I just think I think we need an awful lot more information. If we're going to retain it, it's going to take quite a lot of time. That's just my thoughts. Okay. Uh, that's why we have subcommittees. <laughs> All right. Representative Van Houten. Thank you. Uh, very quickly. I originally had thought of retaining this bill as well, but as I just started up today, I, I was reminded of the fact that we don't even know how to say the word kratom or kratom. I had to go to the Google <laughs> pronunciation uh, to find out that it is Kratom. So if it is that far out of our range of understanding this, I think I will be now voting for ITL. Thank you. I already know what it's called. Any other discussion on the motion to retain? Representative Abramson. Um, I was just gonna say really quickly, um, I believe that the, the underlying intent of the bill, if, if you read it and, and what the sponsor was saying is that he wanted to the bill does essentially two things. It, it would prevent anyone from selling adulterated kratom, um, which can be used as a tea. Um, and he also wanted to have state legislation that prevents it from being sold to people under 18. Um, it did it. It certainly did open up some issues, um, but I felt that this is an issue where whether you um, oppose the idea of the bill or supported the idea of the bill or wherever you were. Um, philosophically on uh, the use of Kratom as a way of, of um, an alternative for getting people off of uh, um, uh, drug addiction um, or depression, that this is something that we needed to study, that there were several issues in it that needed to be studied. So I felt that retain was the most logical approach to, to dealing with it. Representative Burroughs. 
Yes, thank you. I just was going to say that given that this is a drug that the FDA is warning against and the other agency that was brought up by the gentleman from the, I think it was the Kratom Institute, um, was not a scientific ag agency. I'm going to vote to ITL because I think this drug is very concerning. Okay, so the pending motion is to retain uh, and uh, having no more hands up and I think we're ready to vote. So uh, the clerk will call the roll on retaining House Bill 333. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. That is 12 to six. Okay. All right, next up, uh, House Bill 335, the other bottle bill. <laughs> and Representative Abramson, second by Representative Petusek, moves to retain House Bill 335 and recognize to speak to his motion. So I actually liked uh, the idea of this bill, but again, there were there were some issues in how it's implemented. Um, I thought that retaining the bill to consider the idea of something like, a, uh, as we mentioned in the, in the hearing on it, it's a sister bill that uh, we, you know, maybe as an option for, for bottlers that we allow them to, to put a little special New Hampshire logo on there that says this meets the higher New Hampshire bottled water standards. And I thought that having a voluntary program like that made sense because uh, as soon as we started uh, subjecting the, the bill to questions under its current form, uh, what if the water's frozen? Is this gonna apply to bags of frozen ice? Uh, what if it's colored or flavored water or seltzer water? Um, that there were a lot of issues we're trying to do this as a mandate probably wouldn't work. And then there were some federal issues also, EPA and FDA issues. So I thought that uh, retaining it in order to consider some type of optional program. Um, and I believe one of the co-sponsors on this or its sister bill uh, agreed that, that that might actually be, be beneficial. Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, originally, I was gonna OTP this, but, um, whoops. Um, but I, I had the DHHS member come to me late on Friday afternoon asked me to put in an amendment. And it does kind of um, muddy things up because of rules making that DHHS has been working on. So um, I will, uh, and the amendment should have been distributed to everybody late yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we've had enough time to um, read it all. So I will support the retain. Representative Van Houten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do find some confusing aspects to my casting a vote at this moment, but I think the bottom line is that um, just thinking back to my high school biology classes and my other biology classes about the importance of water and the, the percentage of the body that's made up of water and the possibility that we are not supporting the healthiest water supply for all of our citizens, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward odd pass and I will be hopefully able to vote in that manner. Uh, water is just so critically important. Thank you. Okay, any more discussion on the motion to retain House Bill 335? Uh, seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Oh, oh sorry. Representative Fargo, do you have a? Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Bartlett, can you speak to the um, what was in the amendment? Well, if the amendment was um, referring to rules making um, and refers to a RSA. Um, let's see, I have it. 
485. It was distributed to everybody, but I um, I had a number of amendments, not, not just on this one, that I was reviewing, and I didn't get all the way through this one. It came from um, Abigail, and I don't remember her last name, um, and I have not been able to look at the rules making. And I, and I, in my notes, I said, I remember asking Colleen Smith that when we had this bill before us previously, um, they had also been saying that they were working on the rules. And that was at least a year or possibly two years ago. So I'm kind of wondering where it, they want the rules in the bill, but they haven't been clear about what the rule, what DHS rules are that they're working on and how long it's going to take. So that's why I, there were too many questions for me. Well, I, I think that's even more reason to move ahead with, with the odds pass because if we keep waiting, we'll, ne we'll never get clean water from people. So I, I think I, I would rather see this pass. Well, I, I mean, I have to say from my you know, defense of our subcommittee process, I think that when we do that, we, we are putting the heat on the departments to, to get it straight and give us a good, a uh, good language that we understand and we can get behind. Okay, uh, the clerk will call the roll to retain House Bill 335. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. Oh, this is not amended, right? This is just the straight bill. Retain the bill, yep. Yes. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative, oh geez, one second. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. And Representative Hunt. Yes. Yeah, that is 13 to five. Okay. All right. Next up, House Bill 336, the Condo Dispute Board. Represented for two sex, seconded by mm -hmm. IT. Now people get phone calls on their computer. Somebody's coming in. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the motion, <laughs> Representative uh, Patusek, seconded by Representative Osborne, moves in expedient to legislate. And Representative Patusek is recognized to speak to his motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 336, establishing a condominium dispute resolution board. Um, too many rules, too many people. Um, it's limiting. Uh, it's not for condos, timeshares, homeowner associations. It just is too much of too much. And I move to ITL because a, I don't believe it's needed. Okay, Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have to say I completely disagree with um, Representative Patuchik Petu on this one. Um, I think that we have had year after year of testimony from dozens of people in the thousands of condominiums that we have in this state that there is definitely a problem. They cannot resolve all of them through their own boards. Many of them have property managers. Um, is this a perfect bill? Maybe not, but I, I feel like um, we have got to be listening to our constituents that are affected um, so much that they need a resolution board. Now it doesn't, um, I, it's not meant to include homeowners associations and all these other things that that complicate it. So it's not in there and I don't think it belongs in there. Um, the mobile home resolution board has been working very well for a number of years. And this is modeled after that. Um, I think that it's a really 
needed bill for many people who are in this state and I cannot support an ITL motion. Okay, Representative Van Houten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think the what I, I have found some flaws in the bill too, mostly related to language. And I think that that, that can easily be worked out. I, I may be the only one here that lives in a condominium and I'm well aware of the kinds of disputes that we have seen that could be resolved far more efficiently and, and, and with greater alacrity than what we have seen. Uh, what is important to me though, is that this parallels the manufactured housing um, bill, uh, housing uh, ruling. And uh, that seems to have met with some success. And so if we're following a model that has seen some success, I think it's due time to give the condominium uh, owners a chance to resolve their differences without having to go to court, without um, fights within fights and, and things of that sort. So I would urge uh, that we kill the ITL, which is a poor choice of words, that we do not vote ITL, and instead that we um, vote ought to pass in, as an alternative motion. Thank you. I guess I'd, I'd feel compelled to interject here that this has nothing to do with manufactured housing. Manufactured housing is you contract with somebody to put up a house for you and, and you haven't even moved into it, okay? This, this is a totally different situation. You, you have bought into this condo. You, who knows how long you've lived in this condo before you've had whether the issues you're, you're having. So I really don't think it's a fair comparison. Represent that. May I follow up, please? Absolutely. I simply, I, I'm simply referring to the manufactured housing uh, legislation as a process, as a procedure, and not in any way, shape, or manner trying to imply that they're comparable. I'm just saying that there is a procedure that has worked for another group uh, that seems to be amenable to to work this group. So uh, I hope I didn't misrepresent when I spoke about that legislation. It's just a matter of procedure and process that I see working. Um, the products are very different. Thank you. Uh, Representative uh, Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little curious. It feels like you're comparing something different. Now, not every resolution um, issue that comes before the Manufactured Housing Board has to do with somebody who's contracted to purchase a, uh, to, to buy a house to be built. These are the Manufactured Housing Commission is for those who live in manufactured housing, not necessarily because they had it built. Condominiums aren't necessarily, um, the resolution board wouldn't necessarily be because they were having a condominium built, it's because they live there. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think we're comparing apples and oranges here. But as Representative Van Houten says, this is about process. This is about those who are not able to come to a, um, a resolution without going to court with their own board or other unit owners. And it only applies to unit owners. And I think it's a really important process to offer the many, many thousands of condominium owners that live in New Hampshire. Representative Abramson. Um, we, did, we did actually discuss this um, and um, it would certainly be nice to keep condo disputes out of court. 90% um, of them could be dispensed with pretty uh, quickly, but I, I, the reason I'm going with the ITL motion is, um, you know, some alternative like, uh, you know, long ago we used to use justice of the peace or a constable to handle really small matters that were you know, $20 or something. It was something that was a dispute that was too small even to go to small claims court where it used to be handled by justice of the peace or, or a constable. So if, if members wanted to go with a bill like that, I would be receptive to that. Um, but again, that would be a complete change from what's being proposed in the bill. Um, and it would still leave open the, the, the possibility of people going to court. I like the idea of using, you know, some intermediary step before going to court just to keep court costs down. But um, I don't think that the, the bill takes us in the right direction. I'm not sure that the committee can fix the bill to do that. Representative Herbert. I'm gonna vote, for, I'm gonna vote for the ITL. I uh, live in a condo and I'm on a board of directors. So uh, I'm, I'm reluctant to uh, have a third party make the decision on my behalf. Okay. Uh, any more discussion on the motion? 
uh, for inexpedient to legislate. Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Uh, yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. Representative Herbert. Muted, Chris. Yes, sorry. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. And Representative Hunt. Yes. That is 11 to seven. Okay, and we'll leave that on the regular calendar. Right, and um, we need to think about um, who's gonna write the reports. The minority report, yep. Um, Representative Van Houten, do you wanna write the minority report? Yes. Okay. Great. And the, the minority motion will be ITL, correct? Yes. Oh, the minority motion would be odd to pass. Uh, to pass, but, yeah, right, because we just did ITL. All right. All right. My mistake. I'll to pass. Okay. Pull a quick one on me. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, uh, next up is uh, House Bill 337. Um, Representative Johnson, seconded by Representative Patusek, uh, moves to retain House Bill 337 and uh, recognized to speak to his motion. Hello, hello. Uh, so th there are some amendments that the sponsor has reached out and said that he'd like to work on um, to fix some of these issues because if we pass it the way it's written, it would make these um, sports bars, uh, these cigar, sorry, cigar bars more of a rest like a restaurant which then changes its status so he wants to um, work on changing and making an amendment so we, I would like to retain it so that we can work with him and get it fixed. Uh, Representative Van Houten. Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, my preference is ITL on this one. Um, as the representative ahead of me, Representative Johnson stated, it does make it more of a restaurant. And it's kind of like saying we can take a duck and make it into a, an elephant um, by retaining it and waiting until September. Uh, a duck is a duck and a restaurant is a restaurant. I support ITO. Okay, Representative Bartlett. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I have to agree. Um, I don't think you can have half a restaurant. Um, and I, I will um, vote to kill this. Okay, Representative Van Houten. Oh, you're, you're, you're all set? Okay. All right. Any other uh, discussion on the retained motion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Petusik. Uh, yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Rep Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. That is 10 to 8. I'm um, just so you know, I did hear from um, 
Representative McAleer, the winds are blowing very hard. He appreciated the invitation by Representative Burroughs to come over there, but um, I, I guess that um, Representative McAleer's wife says, no, they're worried about trees coming down. Yeah. So um, um, happy wife, happy life. So there you go. He's sorry, he's going to be continuing to monitor it. If power comes back on, he'll rejoin us. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, it is what it is. All right, uh, moving right along then. Um, so next up is House Bill 358, uh, solar collectors on condos. Uh, Representative Terry seconded by Representative Patusek moves in expedient to legislate and Representative Terry is recognized to speak to his motion. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this bill represents uh, an unwarranted intrusion into the affairs of a voluntary association of condominium owners for which there is no compelling government interest at stake. To the contrary, this bill's intent is to effectively become a stakeholder in an association in which it has no membership. In so doing, it seeks to require the numerical basis upon which a particular policy must be determined. The issue here is not solar, it is by whose authority shall a condominium association govern itself and by what rules? Government has no legal basis for either voice or vote in what is strictly an internal matter. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Van Houten. You're, you're talking to yourself. <laughs> you're still talking to yourself. <laughs> One more time, and, and talking to myself is not that bad. Sometimes I'm, <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm really thinking about that this might probably should ought to pass. Uh, as I look back at the legislation, I realize that the wording is not anything that binds a condo association. It simply allows them to, going forward, for, for new docs or, or new con or condo docs that are altered, uh, to, to set the majority at 50% or more. Um, this means that the condo owners will still have their say as to whether the solar should be there or not. As I was preparing for this over the last couple of days, I received, um, I believe it was a Facebook message from um, a member of a condo association just north of me, uh, freestanding condos. And the woman, not realizing that this legislation was coming up, had shown a picture of how solar would fit very nicely into her freestanding condo and estimates that she would improve the value of her condo from $18,000 to $25,000. Um, this is an option for her. It is her style of condo, but I do believe that this kind of legislation would allow that kind of an association to make that decision. Is that something that they want to put to a vote? And it only sets the, the value of the majority vote. So on behalf of my constituents and of those people who have this style of a condominium thing, which they have to vote on. This is not an automatic uh, get out of jail uh, pass. It uh, does not automatically allow them to have solar energy. It does not automatically change any condo documents that cur currently exist. And so I believe that we should give those people who live there the option and the right to make decisions about their own homes. Thank you. So just to make sure that normally for anybody to change condo docs you need more than you need like a two-thirds or three-fifths or uh if it's titled it can be 80 percent and, and while that's true i think we're setting a nice high bar here so that this kind of legislation doesn't doesn't go into effect without for that first happening so i thank you for adding that element to my support High bar is fifty percent. That's a high bar to you. <laughs> no, no, because what you just said uh, about the changing of the condo docs, it is that difficult to change the condo docs going forward, and only after that happens can this legislation trigger. Because the condo docs either have to be brand new docs, or they have to be uh, altered docs or, or, or amended docs in order to have this legislation pass. Yeah, see, I, I, I interpret this the language of this bill is that regardless of what the docs say about changing, you know, your it, that it, it would only be a fifty percent. But um, but it does say that um, this shall apply to all condominium instruments and bylaws adopted or revised after the effective date of the section, and that's to, that that is what I'm referring to. And again, thank you for helping me. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Bartlett. <laughs> uh, 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. In reading the the bill on this, I mean, I, I think that the intent um, from the sponsors is really that we have to make it easier for um, alternative energy to be an option for condominium um, unit owners. Um, it's going to get more expensive to use fossil fuels. Um, and we as a state certainly do not interfere um, with any kind of a program regarding solar um, in it, here. I mean, if you go to Massachusetts, you go down neighborhood after neighborhood and they've all had their solar um, installations paid for by the state and they have reduced their, their use of electricity dramatically. But condominium unit owners don't have that option. Where this applies only to new um, bylaws, people who buy a condo are going to know ahead of time that this is that the solar um, installation is only going to be available when um, when they buy it. Um, so I I'm in favor um, of this of this bill. So I'm going to vote OTP. Representative Herbert. Uh, thank you, Chair, Mr. Chair. Um, my take away is I'm not against solar, that's for sure. Um, but there are a lot of uh, condo associations that are substantial in size. And, uh, you know, getting uh, a, a super majority vote in order to commit to putting solar on those places is, uh, I think, uh, I'd like to keep it that way. I think the best way of solving the solar problem is to have uh, the cities and towns uh, put in their own solar installations. And that way, everybody can have solar electricity. I think I've heard about that. But it's not here, not in our committee. Okay, any other discussion? Oh, do you see some, somebody popping up? There you go, Representative Fargo. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm I feel that when you buy into a condominium, you know what you're getting into. And I, while I think that things should change, I, I think the 50% is not acceptable in my estimation because there's a financial obligation associated with this for, for homeowners. And I think the two thirds needs to stand. I'm sorry. So I, um, sorry. So I, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to vote to ITL this. Okay. Anybody, any other discussion on the motion of any expedient to legislate on House Bill 358? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Representative Patusik. Uh, yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Representative Bartlett. No. Sorry. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. That is 12 to six. Okay. Leave that on the regular calendar. It'll be a couple of days for commerce. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, did, we, did we skip over the ambulance bill for any reason or? We had already um, exacted that, I thought. Did we? No, oh, we already did that one. Okay. Okay. Um, will there, will well, there we be need a minority report. 
Uh, yeah, on condo, yeah. So is there going to be a minority report on the condos? Um, Representative Van Houten, do you do want to think about that one? Okay, you're the you're becoming a I'm new um, Representative Williams on condo. That's a compliment. Thank you very much. But yes, I will do the minority report. <laughs> okay. And the motion will be all to pass. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so no, yeah. That's a minority motion. Okay, House Bill 403. Um, growlers of uh, Representative Greeson, uh, seconded by Representative Patusek, who's uh, inexpedient to legislate. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. You're, you're live, Bonnie. I, I, just for your information, the wind was blowing so hard, it blew my front door open. Oh, wow. <laughs> And so I may, I, yeah, seriously, it just uh, blew it open. So I may come up missing here. <laughs> I'm not sure. Representative McAleer just sent a picture of a tree that just missed his wife's car. Oh, my God. They were, they're serious. They, they yeah. Were right. yeah. So he's not no, leaving I, the house. <laughs> I'm sorry about the in, inquiry that wasn't, I was, I was just, um, shocked as to what was going on. I'm sorry about the inquiry about the ambulance bill. No problem. Uh, uh, so, uh, right now, Representative uh, Greeson is going to speak to the motion of the NXP to legislate on the growler. Yeah, so, uh, so House Bill 403 relative to the sale of alcoholic beverages and refillable containers. Uh, actually, the Sponsor of the bill, Representative Prout, has actually uh, determined it's, uh, it is inexpedient to legislate and has requested that we uh, uh, not pass this bill as it is written. So, kind of makes it simple for us as his recommendation. Representative Abramson. So, I was going to vote ITL, except uh, I was just contacted um, by someone who, who believes that the bill is still necessary. So, I responded to his email. I haven't gotten a response back from him. Um, if we ITL, uh, if it does turn out to be necessary and we ITL the bill, um, unfortunately, that would mean that we couldn't bring the bill back up again next year. Um, it's, it's a very simple um, issue of just a, a, a kind of a repeal. So there's no way you can kind of work around that, that restriction. Um, and of course, the issue is very popular on citizens count. I think it was uh, uh, unanimous uh, support for 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 bringing growlers with you. Um, so for that reason, I would prefer to simply retain the bill just in case um, the issues are not uh, um, uh, resolved. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, Representative Prout said to me was that the fact that we've been we YouTube the public hearing and having uh, a Aiden Moore, the, the attorney. Uh, state clearly that the law was not necessary. Um, he felt that it was good enough for him and because uh, he's got it on tape and we can all see it on YouTube. Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, this is one that I can't support. Um, I, I really feel we should ITL this one. I think that um, the cleaning and the labeling are important. Pending motion. Um, I'm sorry? Pending motions, ITL. Oh, good. Sorry, I was texting with uh, uh, with uh, Representative McAleer again. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Okay. Is uh, the motion clear for everyone? The clerk will call the roll. Been expedient to legislate. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. No. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Re Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. 
Representative Hunt. Yes. 17 to 1. Okay. Well, all those in favor of placing uh, House Bill 403 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 And those opposed, so moved unanimously. Okay. Uh, next up, House Bill 416, Home Distilling. Representative Ammon, second by Moves uh, to retain House Bill 416. And Representative Ammon is recognized to speak to his motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move to retain House Bill 416. I'm one of the co-sponsors uh, listed. And I believe the bill is good intentioned, but it needs some more work. Um, the language could be a little clearer. It is included in the, uh, the RSA 175B-5, which talks about production of beer and wine for family use. Um, it used to be illegal at the federal level to make your own wine or beer uh, for your home consumption. And it took people at the state level or you know, within states to make that practice popular. Uh, and the federal government eventually follows the lead of, of its citizens. Uh, I remember as a kid, my grandfather would make his own, he'd grow his own grapes and make his own wine in the basement. And I, I couldn't tell you if he was doing it before the prohibition ended, but I remember him being happy about the prohibition ending. Uh, this would add distillation of home liquor, uh, not in excess of 200 gallons. If there's more than, if there's two or more people in the household per year, or 100 gallons if there is only one person in the household and it's only for household use, not for resale. Home distillation, uh, the, the technology for home distillation is uh, similar now to, remember when uh, bread makers first came out where you could put the ingredients in a machine, set a timer and push a button uh, and out, out would come a few hours later, a, a warm loaf of bread. Well, home distillation uh, technology has uh, gotten very similar. Those products are available in Europe. Um, for example, uh, that, that's one way that people may do home distillation at home. I think the, uh, the, the bill needs a little work, so I'd move to retain. Okay. Uh, Representative Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I definitely think this needs work. Um, we've had this kind of issue around for a bit and have never come to a, a place at which we passed it. Um, I, I don't know, I will not disagree with Representative Ammon, but I, I have heard horror stories about home distillation and, and dangers that have come from that. Uh, and so that is a concern for me. I, I realize it's a narrow focus right now with the homeowner, the home dis distillation going on here, but it does seem as though it, it, um, it has the potential and I don't wanna to be um, too direct about this, but it does have the pen potential to open the door to um, backdooring our, our liquor commission, backdooring uh, a backbone of our, of our economy here in New Hampshire. And so for a variety of reasons, um, I, I believe that an ITL motion would hopefully be brought to bear after we defeat the retain. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, I'm much more worried about um, poisonous, the poisoning. I'm worried that there's no ability to determine what, you know, what's in the product. I'm much more worried about um, the fact that 140 to 150 proof is obtainable. I'm much more worried about there's no testing and no training for um, homeowners to be doing this on their own. Um, there's no monitoring um, how there's, there's just, nothing around this. This is not making bread. You are not going to die if you haven't put in all the ingredients or let the bread maker work, it, work hard enough on this. Distilling liquor is a very different process. Um, and I do not, I, I cannot support this bill. Not the retain, not, not the distilling of home liquor. Okay. Representative Bilo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
I am going to be, uh, I do not want to vote to retain it. I would like to vote to ITL it. Uh, I have a problem with the word hobby. Um, for uh, four years, um, I was on environment and agriculture, and um, we were, we often um, discussed hobby breeders. Now, hobby breeders sell their dogs and cats. And so I have a problem with hobby because I think eventually there'll be um, sales. So I am going to, uh, I would like to ITL this bill. Thank you. Well, sales would they definitely, have, they would have to be licensed to and regulated. Yeah, that's federal. And state. state. Uh, Representative Abramson. I was just doing some research on Article 5 of amending the Constitution and the one article or the one uh, constitutional amendment that was passed by state ratifying conventions was ending alcohol prohibition. And reading the debate from other states um, was very enlightening about the uh, many attempts by the federal government and state government to try to ban things and in, in particular ban the distillation of alcohol and ban the creation of uh, beer and wine and all of the problems that, that came up when you try to make something illegal. Um, I, I think that, that we were right in 1933 to repeal that and change to regulation. Um, I think that the technology a hundred years later certainly is, is there. Um, I think it's matured for uh, having these machines similar to bread makers or microwaves. Um, I have a bread maker in my home. I have a microwave in my home. We have appliances in our home that are thoroughly tested. And I would, I would say that uh, the safety issues have already been, been well solved, but I, I just feel like banning something like home distillation as a hobby. I, I feel like that's, that's a repeat of prohibition, and they were they were pretty clear in 1933 that prohibition was a was a complete disaster. Okay, I, I guess I, when you were talking about the Constitution, I was thinking about George Washington's first crisis it was the Whiskey Rebellion, the attempt to attack whiskey. Uh, okay, uh, uh, that's a good point too. Hang your hands up simply because it's still up, and have there is no more discussion on the motion to retain. The clerk will call the roll. Oh, Representative Hurt. Okay, okay. Is your hand up because you have you want to say something, Chris, or are you just taunting me with your hand? Yes, I. Uh, um, if I get this correctly, the ITL, uh, if it goes to IT, I mean, uh, if retain fails. Retain. If second. if it goes, if it is retained. Yes. Um, uh, the changes that might be made, in my opinion, could make this uh, worthwhile. So, uh, for that reason, I'm going to allow. I'm going to. I'm going to vote in in favor of retaining uh, the bill. Fair enough. Okay, the clerk will call the roll um, on retaining. Representative Patusic. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunts. Yes. Okay, that is 12 to 6. All right, moving right along here. Uh, House Bill 449, right to repair home appliances. Representative Abramson, second by Representative Patusik, moves in expedient to legislate. Representative Abramson is recognized to speak to his motion. So um, I moved ITL. Um, this again was another bill that I really liked when I first saw it, uh, saw the title. Uh, and then we opened it up and uh, looked at it. Um, what the bill actually would do though is require that manufacturers 
sell parts to just absolutely anyone that they wouldn't have any control over their own logistics and their own infrastructure that give away uh, uh, requiring that they give away um, tech manuals and material that uh, could include some internal information. Um, there were safety issues that were brought up um, from manufacturers and uh, I didn't see anything to counter that. Um, but the bill also opens up um, all sorts of issues on regulating interstate commerce and constitutional and federal issues and legal issues um, that I, I felt would be a little too difficult to retain. And I also felt that the bill had uh, structural issues. We can't solve structural issues internally within the uh, committee. So it would have to be sent back for the, the sponsors and the stakeholders to work out something different. Um, and the final problem that I, that I saw with the bill is um, that, that it really hurt the New Hampshire advantage that manufacturers who want to sell to New Hampshire, New Hampshire customers, they don't have to sell the product in New Hampshire. So you, you would have a manufacturer of appliances or of, I don't know, electronics or something that they wanted to sell to New Hampshire customers. But instead of selling them here, their only options would be to sell them in Vermont, Maine, you know, Maine Outlet Store and uh, North Shore Mass and some of the other retailers. And then we would lose all of the jobs, all of the public and private revenue, all of the local revenue, and we would lose any ability to control it. Um, so certain manufacturers, especially foreign manufacturers, would have a difficult um, time with this. And um, I was trying to you know, figure out or estimate what, what could be the potential revenue loss from enacting this. And I, it's, it's kind of the rabbit hole once you, you know, I like the idea, but once you actually try to use the state government to uh, implement it, it just started creating more and more problems that, that, that couldn't be solved by the committee. So I think that it, it's another one where you have 20 states considering this legislation this year, and you have more states considering it in the, in the previous session, and none of them have passed it because they've run into a lot of the same problems. Great. Representative Abel. Thank you. Uh, with, with all due respect for, uh, to Representative Abramson, I think he is, is reading things into this bill that in mm -hmm. real practice will absolutely not happen. Um, we have to remember, first of all, that New Hampshire having no sales tax, uh, that many people who live near the border in other states come into our state to buy, uh, buy appliances and so forth. Uh, that's, not gonna, that's not gonna change. The second thing about this bill um, is that this is really friendly to small businesses, independent repair people. Uh, we are helping small businesses by supporting this bill. And that's why I want to support this bill. Thank you. Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm flabbergasted that um, some from the other side are, they want to protect big business, um, not allow repairs. This is just for home appliances. We, this bill has been um, scaled back dramatically from what we've read, uh, what we've seen in the past. Um, I think that the small business owners that just want to repair home appliances should be able to do it and they need to be able to access the information that the big government is keeping them from being able to access. So you're going to protect the big manufacturers from the little guys that just want to go out and fix the washing machine or fix, you know, we were talking last night about a, a toaster oven. Well, you're probably not going to get fixed that fixed, but some of these washing machines and dryers you're putting a lot of money into. Um, and you want to be able to just have a local guy repair it. You don't want to have to make an appointment from somebody in Manchester that's got to come out three weeks from now. In the meantime, you haven't been able to use your washing machine. When many of those fixes are very simple and the small repair shop ought to be able to access it. So um, I'm definitely opposed to the ITL and I will be supporting an OTP. Representative Terry. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In point of fact, Many of the manufacturers uh, do make the plans and the parts available for uh, small independent repairs and do-it-yourselfers such as myself. So I do not see this as a widespread problem um, whatsoever. Thank you. 
Uh, Representative Abramson. Uh, um, just a quick um, response that you, you have an absolute legal, moral, and constitutional right to attempt to repair anything that you want that you own that's your property, or to to go to any independent repair shop. Um, but the, so you have a right to repair as it is. It's not the title of the bill that I'm objecting to. It's what the bill actually says. And what the bill says is if you sell appliances in New Hampshire, you have this specialized, you, you know, front loader um, that it, it's very unusual. Um, a lot of companies make their tech support manuals and parts in such a way that that they can have hands-on training or a specialized training program in person where they, they, they instruct people on how to replace certain parts. And if you then have to take all these tech manuals, um, especially for a small manufacturer that only produces a few specialized items, it would be really difficult or maybe even impossible for them to rewrite all of their tech support manuals and remanufacture all their parts and include uh, additional inserts for all their parts so that people could do it yourself in your home or for people who have no training or for independent repair shops. I have several independent repair shops just in walking distance of me here in Seabrook and we're right on the border. Um, so one, it's a, it's a takings and two, it's a, it, it's a mandate. And it's, I, I hear members from the other side saying, oh, big manufacturers. But usually when we're talking about companies that make very specialized parts, um, they're, uh, the more specialized they are, um, small businesses tend to focus in, 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 in very small niche markets. I know that there are companies like Apple and Samsung that make um, specialized parts to their multi-billion dollar giants. But um, if some new startup wants to come up with a new type of small engine or a new type of rotary engine or a new type of battery or something like that, that doesn't have user serviceable parts, um, their only solution if they're if they're trying to sell those products is they couldn't sell them in New Hampshire. And so I saw this as for those types of companies, the only recourse they would have, it would be to sell them in other surrounding states. Uh, so next up is Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This bill is very specific about what a home appliance is. It's not talking about specialized small manufactured um, types of products. Um, I, I would challenge you to find a small manufacturer that this would apply to. These are large manufacturers. Home appliances include um, cleaning, cooking, or food preservation, air conditioners, dishwashers, clothes and washers, uh, washers, dryers, freezers, refrigerators, kitchen ovens. These are made by large manufacturers. And if, they, if a small repair shop cannot get a handbook or cannot get a password, they will be restraining their, their trade from being able to access it. And again, I'm very surprised that the other side is making it more difficult for small businesses to be able to go out there and repair and protecting um, these, these large manufacturers. Representative Burroughs. Yes, thank you. Um, just to the, to the argument that the manufacturers are gonna have to rewrite their manuals, I would venture to assert that um, people who are skilled in uh, the, the repair of these appliances um, are not gonna find those manuals to be rocket science and that they'll be able to utilize these to, to fix the parts. And if they can't, they can always tell the consumer, um, this is beyond what we can do right now. But again, my guess is these people do this for a living they're used to using these manuals and, and most of them should be able to do just fine with the manuals as written. So um, uh, obviously in past years, uh, the legislation seen the people who came in and testified in support of it, it was the uh, computers and phones and you know what I would call the hot real, you know, type things. But this bill doesn't include any of that, right? Mm -hmm. This bill simply goes uh, to the more uh, more mundane <laughs> appliance uh, than that. But at, at the end of the day, my argument against this bill is the exact same argument I guess I had that bill. And that is, does the right of the manufacturer choose who he wants or she wants to service their equipment? That is it their right to decide that they don't want some unauthorized, um, somebody who, you know, with, with a, I guess, a, an appliance shop, 
um, that's going to service these type of equipment. And um, when it comes to uh, the now more modern day equipments, they are very sophisticated in computers and electronics and that they have, a, you know, maybe they have a very strict procedure about how you take the thing apart. And they don't really want anybody who isn't an authorized service tech mucking around because if they mix up something else, they could make do more damage than they were they could or would have done. And, and you know, the, the manufacturer might be stuck having to replace parts that they shouldn't have had to replace because it was an unauthorized service tech who took it apart. So uh, it's the same, same issue I've always had is that um, I think manufacturers have a right to decide who they uh, want to sell parts to, who they want to give manuals to, and who they want to be servicing their equipment. And I've, I've never heard anybody, you know, worry about, um, you know, they're saying, oh boy, I got a sub-zero refrigerator that cost me $3,000, much like a computer, that I want to bring it to any Joe Schmo to have it fixed. Um, I think you, you're more apt to call the authorized service center anyway. So, so this, I really think this legislation is unnecessary. Uh, who's up first? <laughs> I guess, uh, Representative Herbert. You're, you just oh, muted. Okay. You were unmuted, and then you just muted yourself. There okay, you. now now I'm good. Yes, you're yep. good. Okay. Um, I I understand your reasoning in terms of being able to have to choose who can buy their stuff, but I'm uh, I'm uh, I, I think that I, it's difficult for me to imagine that that's how the system works in any way, shape, or form. Because once I buy it, it's mine. Exactly. Not, and so if I if I want to go and have somebody make a repair, and I'm confident that they're good at that, that's my choice. Uh, so um, I'm in favor of the bill, and and for that reason, uh, I mean, I, if I buy a Ford, and and I know somebody's competent, uh, and I take it to a garage, uh, and I have a competent garage that I go to and I've taken oh, no. different cars in different years and, and never had a problem. So, so, uh, so it's, uh, I think, I think I, I'm in the favor of, you know, these people are good at what they do. They make a living at it. Uh, -oh. uh, control, uh, over the, the product. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I don't think that they have a right to do that. So, uh, that's it. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna. That's my vote's gonna be in that regard. I understand. And and um, go ahead, Representative Abramson. So I I should have mentioned this before. I I write embedded software. Um, I went to Rensselaer to study electrical engineering on how to build and develop hardware like this. Um, I had a housemate who worked in appliances, and he was really good at at repairing, you know, basic mechanical things, and he could fix. 90% of the problems even in uh, uh, something that's very specialized. But the just the clock, the control unit in, in the gas oven, um, the, the, that, that component may be made by a small company that then sells to GE or Maytag or, or one of the big manufacturers. Um, the, the CPU, the microprocessors are getting much more complicated. They're, they're far more, just the embedded processors inside your smartphones uh, the 64-bit ARM. I was going to write a, a a a tech book on that, and the the complexity of the SIMD extensions, the 64-bit uh, memory mapping. I mean, I couldn't even begin to explain how to, I, you know, update the uh, the the flash memory um, or do device driver updates for my friend who does nothing but repairing appliances, my housemate who does nothing but repairing appliances. And, the, and some of these shops in Seabrook are really good, but when they get into the, the really complicated technical issues, they're smart enough to say, you know, we're not gonna get into this. You'd need, you'd need a, a, an electrical engineer with a four year, to, you know, with, with tools that we don't have in order to, to break down the electronics on this and try and reprogram or update it or calibrate the, uh, the sensors for, for these these appliances, they're, they're, the independent shops are smart enough to know not to even attempt to do that. And for, you know, for cars, for the ECU units and whatnot, we wouldn't we wouldn't think of having the ABS system for a car um, be reprogrammed by 
a regular local shop, they would send that to the dealership. The dealership has very, very expensive equipment that they use just for reprogramming ECUs. Well, a gas stove has just as much uh, potential for a uh, uh, hazard for fire or explosion if, if, if the, uh, the ECU, if the, if the, the microcontroller, if the, if the computer unit for that uh, fails, um, you know, there, there are real safety issues. And if for some of these engineers making these specialized control units um, for their own sensors, for their own devices, for their own uh, control servos, um, if you if you don't understand what you're doing, it does all the bill does is it tells the company that they now have to rewrite all their tech manuals, their videos, and everything else for people whom they haven't trained. Um, I, I I just I just can't see mandating this. I just see too many problems, uh, legal problems and safety issues coming up trying to mandate this. A lot of unintended consequences. All right, I, I think we beat beat, the, beat this horse dead. Um, okay, uh, is the question clear? Uh, the motion is to uh, inexpedient the legislating House Bill four four nine. The clerk will call the roll. And before I do, uh, one little tip for Zoom: if you hold down the space bar. Uh, while you're talking and let go, it'll it'll temporarily unmute you. So, Representative Patusic. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes, but your trick doesn't work on my device. <laughs> Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye, and the space bar works for me. Cool. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunts. Yes. Ten to eight. Okay. I'll do the minority report on that one. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just want to let you know I have class at 12. Um, I'm just going to pull it up on Zoom. So I'm, I'll be in two things at once. So if you see me talking to somebody, it'll just be my other class. So this won't be surgery where you try to have a. <laughs> I saw that on TV. <laughs> court. The Don't surgeon the court. <laughs> um, you can do two Zoom sessions at the same time. Well, so I mean, we are. One on my phone and then just do one on my computer. So then I have both going. Uh, okay. Oh, because you're you're at home, right? You're 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 not going to class. Okay. Um, I, I guess I guess we can we'll do this. I mean, I um, uh, we're we're doing pretty well here. We got two thirds of it done. I, you know. So, but I, I guess if we'll keep going um, if, until people are had enough. Okay. Uh, so next up is House Bill 451, auto insurance limits. Uh, Representative Terry, second by Representative Patusek, moves uh, inexpedient to legislate. And Representative Terry is recognized to speak to his motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, is this bill amended? I see an amendment from Representative Infantine. What, do we do anything with that? No, because... Okay. We, and, um, my opinion is we're going to do amendments. We're going to, do, going to delve into all that. We wouldn't want to do that. In subcommittee. Thank you. Then I'm, then I'm all set to go. Mr. Chairman and honored colleagues, at first blush, this bill appears to be seeking a reasonable increase in minimum motor vehicle insurance limits. However, we heard compelling testimony that, in fact, the likely effect of enacting this bill would discourage drivers from obtaining or keeping auto insurance because the increased minimum coverages would provoke higher premiums. At a time when scores of our state's residents are struggling to find or retain gainful employment and gasoline prices are rising dramatically, this is not the time to mandate an additional increase to the cost of driving. And finally, Mr. Chairman, I find it deeply troubling that this bill's sole sponsor is employed in the insurance industry and potentially stands to gain financially from the passage of this bill. I move ITL. Jesus. <laughs> 
Uh, Representative Abramson has his hand up. I uh, just wanted to make the point that uh, if, if we wanted to inflation adjust it, um, that um, while I agree with the ITL motion, uh, the amendment would just change it from 25, 50, 25 to 30, 60, 30. So it would, um, I, I didn't have a problem with the amended version, um, but I, I do have a problem that we're trying to get people into insurance, get people into auto insurance who currently don't have it. Um, and I, I felt that maybe we should even lower the minimums um, because we want uh, auto insurance to be as affordable as possible, especially for people who haven't had it in a while. Um, and the, the sponsor wasn't real. Um, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't think that there was a, a conflict of interest uh, because uh, they know that if they did double the, the, the minimums that they would sell fewer new insurance policies. So he might actually, um, he wasn't enthusiastic about the bill because he might actually lose some sales for it. Okay, uh, Representative Bartlett. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, well, whoops. Oh. You, this is one hit the wrong button. It's trying to lower my hand. Um, this is one that with my background, I have got to support. We're talking about at least 40 years, according to the insurance department, since these minimums were raised. Now, 40 years ago, a 2550, uh, 25 policy would have paid for a lot of claims. Most claims are small, but when these limits haven't gone up and the and claims that do come in are much higher than they were, you'll end up paying a total much more often. So the rates do go up. That's the way rate making works. Um, the examples that uh, Representative Infantine gave us, who's the sponsor on this, showed that maybe a 17 year old is paying $4,000 now. He's only gonna pay another $300. Well, by the time he's paid 4,000, 300 isn't a whole lot. And for the other people that are, wait, wait I mean, if you already got $4,000 that you're paying, $300 is not a huge increase on that. However, um, or, you know, people that are more average drivers to increase to a, um, a little bit higher is, is only about $100 more. Um, I'm, I am also the one who spoke on the floor last year when, well, I guess it was the year before now, um, when we were talking about our New Hampshire being the only state that does not have mandatory auto insurance. Auto insurance really has become social insurance, much more like workers comp um, because everybody drives. We have, we've had in the past hours and hours of testimony about um, what it's like to be hit by an uninsured driver. And our uninsured rates have gone up dramatically over the last decade because so many people that are not insured um, are, and are at fault in an accident, your policy ends up paying. And the way that you pay for that is it all, everybody that's got an insurance policy pays into that pool. Um, I, you know, I have a pretty good idea I'm gonna lose on this one, but this is one of my principled stands. That's all. Okay. Representative Abel. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to say that our illustrious my, uh, committee minority leader, uh, ranking member, excuse me, ranking member, uh, uh, said exactly what I was going to say. Um, and so I, I certainly support her position that keeping these uh, minimums as low as they are is just great. It's just keeping up our uninsured and underinsured motorist part of our, of, of our policies higher than it ought to be. So I, I agree with her and I, I am against the ITL. I kind of missed that one, but uh, I, I would have to say I was surprised to see how many states that actually were, their minimums were even lower than ours. Uh, I was uh, kind of awestruck at, at kind of scary when you when he's driving those other states and realize that, oh, great, we got, they have mandatory auto insurance, but the, the limits were so low that it doesn't seem like it really matters. But at the end of the day, I would hope that every 
auto insurance salesman knows you need to sell it up. You need to move the customer up, need to get higher rates. Um, and for those of us who want to have an umbrella, we're, we're at the top anyway, so it doesn't affect us. And um, I think that the fact that we have a very well insured market, we have people who can make choices and decide what are the right limits for themselves. And, and, uh, and I think that, that, that our auto insurance market is, does not need to be disrupted with changing this. And, and we've already had a bad experience once when many years ago, when we tried to change the, the med pay and, and, uh, and, and, I, I can't tell you that that bill was repealed faster than than campgrounds. <laughs> so when we try to tax campgrounds, so uh, to me, changing these rates would it would only be disruptive to the marketplace. Okay, any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll on inexpedient to legislate on four fifty. Okay, Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Representative Bartlett. Space bar. Sorry, no. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Representative Weston. Sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, Yes. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. Vote is 14 to 4. Okay. I will do the minority report. Okay. All right. Well, that keeps it on the regular calendar. <laughs> okay. Uh, House Bill 462, condo lien. Representative Johnson, seconded by Representative Patusik, moves inexpedient to legislate. Representative Johnson's recognized to speak to her motion. Good afternoon. Um, I think this bill needs way too much work. And I think it would, especially right now, would be more detrimental to our citizens and to our banking industry and everybody involved if we um, even tried to pass this or retain it. It needs too much work. I, I want to ITL it and let it get some more work done. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion of uh, inexpedient to legislate on four? 62. Okay. <laughs> All right. The uh, clerk will call the roll. When he's ready. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Representative Fargo, space bar. Did she drop? Yeah, no, yes, yes, yes. Oh, Sorry. Okay. okay. Representative Wesson. Yes. Representative Bill Yu. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. And Representative McAleer. Representative Johnson. 
Hunt. 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 Yeah. That's your name. <laughs> I knew that. That could be John. <laughs> okay. So 18 to 0. 18 to 0. Miracle. Okay. Um, all those in favor of placing House Bill 462 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. Okay. Uh, House Bill 466. Uh, condo pecuniary benefits. Uh, Representative Johnson, second by Representative Patusik, moves in expedient to legislate. Representative Johnson's recognized to speak to her motion. Hi, thank you. Um, this, um, when a condo association, it has known that many association members has to do maintenance and repairs on their own associate, association properties. This helps support local businesses and their neighbors. This also helps lower the cost as the condo members also benefit and helps them take pride in their own work. Uh, restricting um, would harm the relationships between the condo and undue, gov undue government regulations on private members and association members. So I support the ITL. Hey, Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's really interesting. Um, <laughs> what a difference a year makes. This one on the consent calendar last year was unanimous vote out of our committee. Yeah, I, yeah really, I looked it up, Mr. Chair. I voted for it. You did, but I will support the ITL. Okay, Representative Fargo. Um, yeah, I remember this really well too. I think this was brought to us by Ellen Reed last term and we amended it to say, um, th that just the person who would be providing the service just has to recuse himself from the vote. Doesn't mean that he can't do the maintenance. It doesn't mean that anything changes. He just can't vote for himself, which, which I still think is, is fair. Um, so I just, I just wanted to raise that point. All right, any more discussion on the motion of inexpedient to legislate? <laughs> Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bill Yu. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. 17 to 1. 18 to 1. Okay. Uh, any problem with putting this on the consent calendar, Representative? Nope. Okay. Boy, this is my big chance here. I, no, I, it's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of placing on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved unanimously. Okay. Um, House Bill 477, Internet Outage Reimbursement. Representative Terry, seconded by Representative Patusek, moves in expedient to legislate. Representative Terry is recognized to speak to his motion. Uh, yes, could you give me a moment, uh, Mr. Chairman? I have to find, uh, I have to find my write-up here on this bill. Which one is it for? 77. 477. Internet outages. It's a good day for it. Yeah. <laughs> Very appropriate. The sewer protection guy came in and said, boy, uh, no, that, was, that was the robot cops. Yeah. The outage one. Mr. Call. Chair, is there a chance we might be able to have a, a lunch break after this one? We're doing really well. It looks like we're going to get this done this afternoon. Would people want to stick? I mean, I guess, uh, Joe, how is that, does this work for you? What's your afternoon schedule? 
Um, would it be when would it be coming back? One thirty. Uh, we um, could we could do that, and maybe yes. We, we could. Because I I have a class, so I have this class ends at one fifteen, and then I have another class at two. So, Representative Fargo, did you? Yeah, have um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I get my vaccine this afternoon and have to leave by three. So if we take a lunch break, can we keep it a little bit shorter than we normally do so that we can um, finish, so I can be part of finishing today? Right, okay. No, we definitely want to do that because we have the same problem with Chrissy tomorrow. Yeah, one hour. Um, so, um, so, so Joe, what did you say your class schedule to jog my mind? I know I must have it written down somewhere. What was your... I'm sorry, what was that? What was your class schedule again? Um, for today, so I have this class ends at one fifteen, and then I have another class at 2 to 3.15. Okay. Mr. Sheriff, sure if you're ready to go on this bill right now, I'm ready, but if you want to hold it over, that's fine oh, too. Let, oh, let's just do this one. Let's do yeah. this one. Take this through. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. This bill should be ITL for two reasons. Uh, first, it would address a problem whose magnitude and frequency have not been established as well as to presume internet service providers egregious failures to address service outages inappropriately or not at all. Second, the bill requires that internet service providers be responsible for determining both who is responsible for customers out of service statuses, and then precisely how long each of the service time lasted, out of service time lasted, that can be attributed with certainty to the service provider. Then third, and with respect to the bill's provisions penalizing ISPs for not meeting advertised speeds, it must be recognized that ISPs make clear that there are variable factors that affect each customer's upload and download speeds, not the least of which are factors that are not the responsibility of, the, of any ISP. Such factors include the number and types of customer devices utilizing bandwidth at any given time and the fact that internal wiring is neither owned by nor the responsibility of the ISP. In summary, this bill would introduce onerous and unjustified government regulation in a type of commerce that while not as yet widely available in modern high-speed modes as we would like is nevertheless not guilty of the offenses this bill wishes to remedy by its draconian, unjustified and unworkable standards and requirements. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Abramson. Um, I agree with the ITL motion. Um, I, so I disagree. I certainly think that this is a serious problem. It, it certainly is in Seabrook where I live where we have uh, internet outages um, quite frequently, um, even though we're paying a uh, top dollar for service. But I believe that the solution is to open up uh, internet service providers to competition, um, that that would benefit consumers more and it would benefit businesses more especially those in tech support and, and businesses that need uh, teleconferencing and telepresence and other thing, things that require 100% uptime. Um, so, but trying to change this, this bill has structural problems, trying to change this bill into something completely different um, that might even end up going in front of a different committee would be uh, uh, not something we can do internally. And we have to send the, the issue back to the sponsors and stakeholders for, for a change on that magnitude. Okay, any more discussion on the motion of inexpedient to legislate? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Batusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Hand. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. 18 to zero. 
Okay, 18 to zero. Okay, uh, all those in favor of placing on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. Uh, okay, well, why don't we, why don't we take a break now and come back at uh, 1 15. Okay. Um, just to let everybody know, I um, had an amendment I just distributed to everybody regarding the, um, the restaurant delivery service. It's House Bill 593. When I ordered it originally, I had the wrong number. I put in 592. So I just asked for a um, corrected amendment. Okay. So hopefully we get it back and I'll get it out to everybody. So why, don't you, why don't you tell everybody what's in the amendment? Um, the amendment is to uh, make it effective upon passage, but mm -hmm. also to put a two-year sunset clause in. So, so that um, we'll see, you know, we, it would hopefully help these small restaurants right away, but then you can see and take a look at it afterwards to see whether um, it needs to continue. And, uh, and I agree with this concept. That's good. Okay. All right. We'll see you. We'll see you. Then, I have a three o'clock um, this afternoon. We're going to be done before yeah. three. Okay. <laughs> have a good lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Are you coming back? So we're going to come back at one fifteen, and please be timely so we can miraculously get this all done before three. <laughs> okay. All right, I see you're putting it up there. Thank you, Pam.
Here we go. Well, it's gone pretty smoothly, I thought. Yes. Yeah. John, in honor of this being an exec, I had a half and half for lunch today. What's a half and half? Same thing we usually have over uh, across the street when we have exec. A half a sandwich and a half a cup of soup. Oh, okay. I had a salami sandwich. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it is. I had, I, had stuff, I had stuffed shells. Yum. Ooh, that sounds good. We had a we had a baked ham the other day, and I had a ham and Swiss. Well, my husband doesn't eat meat, and um, and I can eat whatever I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I, like I went shopping, and that's the beginning with salami. It just sounded so good. Oh so, yeah. Um, I mean, I can live without meat, but and he's an easy man to live with. But occasionally, I just have to have some. Yeah, I didn't even have to make these stuffed shells. They came from my restaurant, so it was even better. <laughs> <sighs> and did everybody see the amendment I sent out? Yes, I got it, printed it, and it's in the, it's in the Bible. <laughs> it must have been 10 o'clock last night when I sent it out, and I just picked the wrong number. That's okay. And when I saw it, I went, oh, rats. <laughs> well, we, we know the intent. <laughs> Well, I, I apologize to Courtney profusely, and she got it, turned it right back around, so. Beautiful. Just had to change the um, House bill number and the amendment number. But I really hope we can help these small restaurants. Yeah, this is a big help. Yeah. Like I said, I talked to some of the local folks in Derry, and they're having the same problem. Yeah. And, you know, these are, these are my neighbors. These are my friends. But, you know, I, I wouldn't have had any idea. We don't use delivery from restaurants, but no. um, I wouldn't have any idea that they didn't have to have a contract. Uh, and the fact that they take the tips, too, bothered me. Yeah, yeah that, that, that so, bothers my butt right there. So the restaurant I work for uh, a couple nights a week, we've had this happen to us. So I talked to the owner, you know, and her thoughts and and because we've had people call up and say, you know, where's my order? I'm like, we, we don't know what you're talking about. And so, you know, this amendment and, and this bill is something that's definitely needed because I didn't realize either because you need and I didn't know anything about it until, you know, we got here. So this is one that is definitely needed <laughs> because, you know, it's just wrong. Can I could you send me a copy of that amendment? Oh, of course. I'm sorry, Pam. <laughs> Can I ask why we put a sunset date on it if everyone agrees that it's like a terrible thing? Why 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 are we putting a sunset on it? Gives us another oh. session. Um, well, because I don't I don't understand the full consequences. And and frankly, I really do believe it's the restaurant's responsibility on their own webpage to let people know whether they have a contract or not. Um, mm. that, that, that the idea that, that this legislation is going to solve all the problems. I, I, John, I agree with you on that, but the problem is they're, they're advertising that they have a like they have one of us and they don't. And they don't. I, think the, I think the echo is coming from the committee room. Exactly. It's going uh, through something. The committee room's not even um, connected. And who's getting the? Oh, um, um, Mr. Chair, did Chair, you see? Did you see? Um, um, Representative, Representative email, email regarding this amendment. Representative, how you're muted, sir. Okay, are we still echoing? Um, no. 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 Um, yeah. Representative Abramson says that we can't do a um, the amendment that we we talked about about sixty days. It has to, it can't be upon passage. It has to be a sixty day. You the New passage. Hampshire the New Hampshire Supreme Court and I think it's state law. It, may, it might even be House rules also that you can't have a new law take effect upon passage. We have an enrollment period for one, and you have. Uh, where you have laws that might uh, conflict with other laws. 
um, or bills that might conflict with other bills um, going through the House and Senate. Um, but I just uh, emailed legislative services and saw if I could get a 60 day, you know, delay for this takes effect within 60 days of passage. So um, I've covered this uh, issue before, and um, there is a actual statute or RSA that says the type of legislation and what the effective dates are supposed to be. And so that's when bills come out of legislative services, they're going to have all those numbers on it. But we're the legislature, so we can do whatever we want. And if we want it to be effective upon passage. That's right. Effective upon passage. Now, if there is somebody who says there's a problem with it or something like that, they can take it up in the Senate. But I, I, I've been down this path before, Max, and I can assure you that if we want to say upon passage, we can say upon passage. And I think that that's, I think that that's bad practice on top of that. If, it, if it's a new penalty, if it's a repeal, it's different. But the New Hampshire Supreme Court has said if you repeal something, then the repeal takes effect immediately or a reduction in penalty takes effect immediately. But this is a new penalty. This is a new rule. And, and I do, error. Max, I, Max, I do have an amendment in for 60 days, by the way. That was the original amendment that- We can take that amendment up too, but I, I don't know. Um, so, so Pam, I, I hate to do this Pam to you. Yesterday. Did research on, did the Supreme Court really order that we can't do that? It's, um, well, it's on criminal law. So that was the research I was doing. So we, it might be different because the, Judiciary has to update all their forms, so they'd like to have things take effect January 1st of the next year to give them enough time to change all their forms. But you're still going to have state agencies that have to enforce this. Uh, to their forms no, no, I think this is private right of action. I need to pull the bill up, but I don't remember this being a criminal. But that would, even if it's private right of action, it's still going through civil private, court. Private right to, I understand that, but. I will uh, see what I can find out. So this was a recent um, New Hampshire Supreme Court decision, Representative Abramson? Oh, that, that was uh, before even the savings clause. This was, um, I want to say 2001. That, that's a criminal case, so they may, they may not, it may not apply here. Um, it done, it does you're it. adding a new law, you're adding a new penalty. Um, we've usually allowed just a certain amount of time to make sure that you're well, I mean, you I would to say, require someone to do something that they can't do. Okay. I would say in defense of this statute, and, and I'm not a lawyer, nor do I pretend to be one. The defense of the statute is what um, these DoorDash, what they're doing is already, the court has already ruled in favor of the restaurants for just this issue. So this is, um, this is precedent. But I got used to you, you know, last year when, when uh, Bartlett and Williams would keep telling me this is this is uh, belts and suspenders, because we're actually reinforcing a case law that's already occurred. Because this was the one that um, the owner of the T Bones, um, Tom Boucher, he had the wherewithal to be able to sue, and he won, but this, yeah. but it was only for his case. Exactly. Um, and so that's why this was brought forward. And it'll, you know, the, we have this testimony from the small restaurant owners that are being affected too. Right. And, and there's a precedent then. Yeah. At any rate, that's the reason why we're sunsetting. So we could revisit it again to, within two years to see whether uh, this. Right. And I, you know, and to be fair, I mean, we, we discussed this and we want to help the restaurants. We want this to go through. Yeah. We probably should be talking about this when we're on the bill. That's true, too. Yeah. Part three of the bill, any food delivery platform that violates this chapter shall be guilty of a violation and find $100 for each delivery made without the agreement required in paragraph two. Okay, you're right. So, I, I, be, of me, but. so I'm not even sure if 60 days, somebody might uh, change it again in the Senate. They might say, Jan go back to the original January 1st, 2000. Max, if it makes you happy. We can certainly then take up Connie's amendment after we pass that amendment, which then would take it back to 60 days. Nothing that, makes me happy. My M3 is not running. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I always thought the legislature can can and you, repeal its own law. You know, you, you know, no legislature can uh, 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 
supersede a future legislature. So I, sure. I always love to change our own, our own rules. But well, I mean, yeah, would be more recent. Do you think is, but if Pam can maybe, uh, we're late. But all right, sorry. Okay, let's get going. All right. Uh, so where are we at? We're at four eighty-eight. Four eighty-eight. Okay. Representative Greeson, second by Representative Patusik, moves to retain House Bill 488. And Representative uh, Greeson is going to speak to his motion. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I got uh, booted out of the, uh, the session there. Unfortunately, I was able to get back in time here. Uh, so uh, House Bill 488, the original uh, bill uh, was to establish a committee to study the benefits of allowing New Hampshire citizens to purchase health insurance from out of state companies. And in uh, discussing the bill, it was determined that the, uh, the direction that this committee would be going in may not be, um, may not be the right direction or, or it, we need, it needed more guidance. And so uh, I'm moving to retain it so that we can give it some more guidance. We can make sure we have the proper membership on the committee, give them a little bit more specific. Uh, for example, it was brought up making sure that they uh, look into single payer, uh, the feasibility of implementing free market driven healthcare plans, et cetera, like a la carte plans, but basically giving them more specific directions to be able to come back and give uh, better uh, answers to uh, to what we're looking for. Because we're all, we're all aiming for the same thing. We wanna bring people's out of pocket uh, healthcare expenses medical expenses down. And so how do we best go about doing that? And so uh, if we retain it, I think we can we can give this committee uh, uh, a better direction. So if I understand you correctly, you're, it's not that you want to focus on the out of buying health insurance across state lines, is that you would like to have, or do some work and figure out how we can make health insurance premiums lower. Correct, yes. And if we give it more direction, then you know, specifying a little bit better uh, uh, course of action as opposed to the broad statement uh, that was int initially introduced, then, uh, then we can make better use of the committee. Okay, great. Representative Bartlett. Um, I'll let somebody else on my side um, speak first. I'll, I'll um, speak afterwards. Okay. Representative Van Houten. Uh, thank you. Um, this is a committee. This is only to set up a committee. I, I agree that the scope of the committee, that the, that the charge of the committee would be very, very broad. But to set up a committee, I think, is, is just to go into the deep end without a paddle. Um, I do think this is probably worthy of an ITL. It might have some validity, but I think it needs to be totally reworked. And I think that's more than we can handle. We, we as a legislature are taking on many, many bills, valid bills that need to be spruced up and, and spiffed up and put back out. But if we keep taking on, on very difficult tasks, tasks that are unlikely to be uh, met, I think that we are going to be in difficulty. And again, we're talking about a committee here, which deals with legislators rather than getting into the experts from the legislature, who I think should probably be brought in. Uh, I just think it's too much. I think uh, ITL is, is the, only, the only direction that I can see as, as, as workable, despite the intent of those people who brought it forward. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative uh, Fargo. Oh, you're you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I left it off, but I, I with the echoing, I turned it back on. So, but Jeff, I absolutely commend where you're going with this. And I'm glad to hear that you're saying that you want to expand it to look at more than out of state. But we've had so many, I don't know if you've looked into um, the committees and commissions that have already been established that are working on this now. Um, I know Jerry Knark and, and a team of people that he was working with last term um, was really involved in this already. And I, I'd wondered, had you had an opportunity to speak to anybody? Maybe Pam has information about this, but I think this is already being done. Um, and so for that reason, I, I think I would ITL this and I would um, maybe get involved or, or look into the commissions and committees that are already looking at this very subject already. Uh, I was not aware. Thank you for the for the question. I I, <clears throat> I was not aware of anything that was presently underway. Uh, it would certainly be. We don't want to duplicate efforts. That just becomes a waste of time. Uh, but if we, uh, you know, 
I, I guess what it would come down to is who's doing what, where are they in what they're doing, and when are they going to have something finished that we can talk about? And so uh, if we can come up with something that says, here's a, a fixed amount of time, explore the, this direction, come back with your findings by, and, uh, and then may, maybe, maybe something actually gets done about it because we could send this thing off into the abyss and nothing ever gets done about it. We sure felt good about looking into it. And so uh, I, I, I think that if we point it in the right direction and give it a deadline, maybe we'll come up with something. Okay, Representative Abramson. Um, actually, this is a question for the chair on uh, a retain motion. Um, if we do choose to, re to retain this, can the retainment itself be kind of done as, as like an ad hoc uh, subcommittee with the, ad, not subcommittee, but an ad hoc committee of just volunteers who get together and discuss it? Maybe we won't need a subcommittee at all or a commission at all. Um, well, again, if, by retaining it, we'll we'll be able to work on it in the in the fall. And in terms of anybody ad hoc wants to work on it, they can certainly do that. Um, at the end of the day, the bill, you know, either gets amended or it gets killed or it gets re-referred for interim study. It can have three different motions come come next October, November. Okay, and now you're ready, Representative. Yes, Robert? I am. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> um, I I appreciate everybody's um, input on this. One, there's a a deadline on this committee, not commission, of November first of this year. Two, and so if we don't even look at it until September or October, there's no time at all. Two, um, it's a committee, not a commission. So it's only members of the legislature who are already going to be out straight in September and October. Three, it's so broad that three people, four people can't do it. Um, and, and Representative Fargo is right. We've, we've already got a commission working on this. Um, Tyler Brennan also came to us and we do pay attention to what Tyler says. Um, he says there's many providers, many of them are not licensed. Um, we need a local president and the out-of-state carriers are going to have a really tough time being able to negotiate insurance benefits in state. Um, so for all of those reasons, I, I really don't think this is a, something that a committee can look at by November 1st. Um, and I'm going to vote to ITL it. I'm sorry. I, I agree with the intent, but it, it, it's um, we're not going to be able to do what the goal of the of the bill is. Okay, so the pending motion is to retain. Representative Johnson. So my question is, if we retain it and we find out that there is other bills out there that are similar, wouldn't that then, you know, by at least us retaining it, making sure that the other bills are out there and then we don't have to worry about it, but at least it gives us the opportunity if we have to fix it, to fix it later? We can certainly decide come this fall uh, whether this bill is necessary or not. Okay, is the motion clear to retain? Clerk will call the roll. Representative Batusek. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. The vote is 10 to 8. Okay. All right, <clears throat> moving right along. House Bill 510, robocalls. Representative Greeson, second by Representative Patusek, moves inexpedient to legislate. 
Is there really any need for discussion on this bill? <laughs> no. Seeing none, the clerk <laughs> call the roll. I just need a minute to catch up. Sorry. No problem. We're on House Bill 510. It sounds like you have one of those old IBM Selectric type, uh, keyboards on your computer. That, that wasn't me. I don't know who that was. <laughs> Sounded pretty funny, though. Yeah, I'm your memory goes back that far. I can barely remember those keyboards. <clears throat> we had one when I was a kid. I sold a lot of those IBM PCs and XTs and ATs for that keyboard. We still have one in our house upstairs. <laughs> Commodore 64. <laughs> that's the last yeah. that goes way back. <laughs> that's the original. The trash 80. That, that was the yeah. only uh, Commodore 64 was the only computer that ever outsold the IBM PC. And I, I guess it did so for what three or four years. It, it, it was it lasted a while. It, the cassette tape being the data backup was not did not lend itself to stick around for very long. But OK, are we ready? I'm ready. And All this right. is Greason and seconded by Petrusic. Yes, ITL 510. All right, calling the roll. Representative Petrusic. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Representative Herbert. He's, he's there. Pull down the face bar. Took off his head bar, head, headphones. Oh. Okay. Headphones. <laughs> You're up, Chris. Use your space bar. <laughs> <clears throat> ITL? Yes. 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 Perfect. Representative Van Houten? Yes. Representative Fargo? Yes. Representative Weston? Yes. Representative Bellew? Yes. Representative Burroughs? Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. 18 to zero. Okay, all those in favor of placing House Bill 510 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, so move unanimously. Okay. Um, House Bill 518, rebates used for commissions. Uh, I move uh, ought to pass and seconded by Representative Patusik. And this is a bill that got cut up in the COVID shuffle and uh, we would like to make sure. Yeah, it was OT so O2P. It was OTP in 2020. Any discussion on the motion about to pass? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll when he's ready. Just need a second. Uh, what bill are we on right now? We're on 510. Uh, no, 518. 518, right? 518. So Greece, uh, Representative Hunt moves all to pass, all right. Yeah. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. 
Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Representative Hunt. Yes. 18 to 0. Uh, all those in favor of placing on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved unanimously. All right, moving right along. House Bill 520. Uh, this is the Insurance Department's bill. Representative Bartlett, seconded by Representative Hunt, moves uh, ought to pass. Is there any need for a discussion on this bill? No, these were um, just technical changes um, requested by the Insurance Department. Um, Attorney Silverstein explained all the ins and outs and um, I, we're fine with it. Everybody's good. Good? All right. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. On 520. I, I just need one minute again here. I know, so I was filling in this thing. Actually, I mixed it up with 519 and 520. This is the one that um, delivers the um, insurance documents electronically, which is what's been going on anyway. Right. Um, sure. And this is just putting it into statute that the insurance companies can do that. And the motion is all to pass by Bartlett. Seconded by Hunt. Seconded by Hunt. All right. Ah, Representative McAleer is here. There he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. He's got his winter jacket on. Is it cold or is it, did, you, did you have to go hike to find the internet? I'm, I'm, I'm not at the house. I'm uh, down in Glen at a oh. restaurant. So I have huh? to be quiet. Okay. Is Probably not else? on a secured wire Wi Fi. So I don't know whether that's kosher. <laughs> is that all right? Well, that's fine, but yeah, just say that you're not alone. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not alone. <laughs> okay. No jacket. Are we ready for a roll call? Are you ready? Ready. Yep. All right. The motion is, uh, and I will rule that uh, uh, McAleer is here for the motion. Uh, as um, ought to pass. Representative Patusik. Definitely, yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative yes. Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. I was going up there. Yeah. I had to, I did all, thank goodness, I did all my part yesterday. Representative McAleer, is that, could you go on? I, I don't on know you? what you're voting at. I'm going to have to pass. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you put yourself on mute? You know, it's, yes. It's Thank like... you. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. And Representative Mac McAleer, you pass? You can't pass. Well, um, Representative McAleer, this is um, House, House Bill 520, and it's regarding insurance companies um, delivering documents electronically. <laughs> hold hold, hold down your space bar while you speak. Yes. Hold, there you go. Yes. Okay, 19 to 0. Yay. Okay. Um, all those in favor of placing 520 on the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 So moved unanimously. Okay. Oh, some Representative McLear, get in here for 527. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. Um, House Bill 527, um, Representative oh. Dustick, uh, uh seconded by. Representative Osborne moves to retain, and Representative Patusik is recognized to speak to his motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this bill has to do 
adding additional definition for qualified charitable gift annuity issued by a charitable organization. I don't know about you, but there are so many TLAs in here, I was confused. Uh, there's got to be clarification. I, my notes, I looked at them and they still don't make a lot of sense. Uh, an annuity is an insurance product and it just is confusing and I move uh, to retain it so I can get some more knowledge and understanding of what this is about. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I, the reason why I wanna retain this bill um, is if you might remember, it had uh, two limitations, uh, how long the charitable entity existed and the organization existed and what its net, net worth was. And, um, and the, uh, the sponsor did send out an amendment to, to try to move those numbers around. But um, I actually, again, here, I, this is my old dog. Um, we actually deal, deal this subject with charitable gift annuities many, many years ago when it came to um, uh, uh, nursing homes and um, uh, the other. And the issue was that people were setting up charitable annuities. And in that, we made a requirement that the, the nonprofit had to have a million dollar asset. And because the assumption was that with a million dollar asset, that they would have the, the somebody who's working, who works there, uh, who has the, the horsepower to understand what, how this annuity works, how to make the investments and do the proper work to uh, ensure that the annuity, the, you know, the investments um, were preserved. So in that sense, I, I want to retain it. And it, since it's really very similar to what we dealt with already, um, I think that we, we can fix this correctly, but we could not do it now. So uh, first up is Representative Bartlett. I'm going to defer to um, Representative Fargo or Bolio, and um, I will speak last. Okay, I'll do that from now on. <laughs> so uh, next up is Representative Fargo. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a few concerns about this that I would prefer just to ITL this. Um, Tom Donovan from the um, trust department has concerns these um, charitable annuities are not regulated. I think from a consumer protection perspective, um, this could be dangerous again. Um, similar to Representative Carey, I think this is a person who may be using legislation to further his business and I just not comfortable with this. So um, I'm, I, I'm going to vote against the retain and I would prefer to ITL this. Right. I understand that. I did talk to Tom uh, Donovan and he, his issue, the amendment that he, that was sent out uh, did address his problem. So in that sense, he was all set, but I have to admit, I was not all set because I just don't think, um, you know, the, 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 the limits 25, or I think he raised it to 50 or something, the, the limit, the, it, it's just too small and you're uh, the net asset of the charitable trust. And, and I think we wanna make sure that when we pass this, we, um, we are doing proper consumer protection. So I hope to do that by retaining it. Representative Bilo took her, put her hand down. So now you're up, Bartlett. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I, um... I have some concerns about this bill. Um, we've already identified what some of them are. I am willing to look at the amendments um, and try to get a clearer picture of, I, I think I understand what the goals are, but I don't understand the mechanisms. So I'm willing to go along with the retention, though it's gonna take an awful lot to persuade me that um, this is a good bill. Fair enough. Any other discussion on the motion to retain? Seeing none, the clerk will call. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative 
Fargo? No. Representative Weston? No. Representative Bellew? No. Representative Burroughs? Yes. Representative McAleer? Yes. And Representative Hunt? Yes. 16 to 3. Uh, do consent or do you guys want on the regular consent. count? This was to retain, sir. Oh, that's right. We don't have to worry about it. Let's to retain. Okay. No biggie. Okay. <laughs> uh, House Bill 553, banning automatic oh. contract renewals. Representative De Palma, seconded by Representative Patusik, moves uh, inexpedient to legislate. Representative DePaul, would you like to speak about it, or I think we're all pretty much ready to vote? Yeah, if you guys are ready to vote. I'm... Okay. Uh, well, Representative Abramson has a, something to say. Yes, oh, ma'am. Actually, this is another one of those bills where I agreed with what they were trying to do, but when we opened up the bill, I saw um, at least three different problems with the bill. And in, in my case, I would ask the sponsors to come back next session with, with something else, working with the stakeholders. But uh, um, I didn't think that the committee could, it, it's only two sentence bill, have three problems in a, in a two sentence bill is probably one too many. Right. And hopefully next time he'll show up to the hearing. Okay. All right, the motion is uh, inexpedient to legislate. Is the question clear? Oh, Representative Fargo. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I'm gonna buck everybody again and say, I I, I don't see the three problems in the three, you know, little bit of a bill. I think it's a good co consumer protection bill, and I, I don't see any reason to ITL it, but just thanks. <laughs> so do you have cable TV? You, know, you have you have some things you pay by credit card, and they automatically renew it every year or so? Yeah, but I don't see why an email just to... Uh, let you know that your renewals coming up is a problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, the motion is to legislate. Representative Patusik, you have. No. Okay. All right. Uh, is the clerk ready? Ready. Okay. In expedient to legislate. Representative Patusik. Uh, yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. I heard no. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, no is Repres my answer. Thank you. Representative Fargo. No. Anything will go wrong. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bill Yu. Oh, yeah. He's all business. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. <laughs> Representative McAleer, you're unmuted now and you muted it when you gave your answer. But no. I'm sorry. Representative Hunt. Yes. Okay, 10 to 9. Okay, we'll do that on the calendar. Is there going to be a minority report? There will be a minority report. Okay. I'm who wants to do it? I'm the only one having a problem with this mute thing. Who, who wants to do Okay, um, Representative Weston will do the minority report. Okay. And, the, and it's all to pass as the motion? That's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, House Bill 592, um, the uh, vaccine bond. Representative Greeson moves, uh, second by Representative Patusek to retain. And Representative Greeson is recognized to speak to his motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this, uh, this bill uh, proposes to establish a means for those who've been injured by vaccines to receive compensation. And in the, uh, in the hearings, the number one concern was, will we buck up against the federal program? 
And uh, otherwise, there didn't seem to be any objections to doing something, just making sure that this would not be subsequently uh, found uh, if in a legal challenge to, to be overridden by any federal program. So I, uh, I received, uh, and actually it was unsolicited as somebody who, had, who was watching the, the hearings actually, uh, uh, it was an attorney and uh, sent her opinion that there should be no problem with, with going forward with this legislation. And so obviously one is, is one opinion. And so I am now actively seeking additional legal opinions just to make sure. Uh, but if we're given a little bit more time, I think we can make this, we can address that issue. Uh, then of course the, uh, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, whether or not they're the, the appropriate uh, uh, agency to, for controlling, uh, for handling this. So it just, there's, uh, it, it seemed to me that there wasn't any opposition to doing something. It was just making sure that what we're trying to do can be done. And so give it a little bit more time. I'm actually able to, uh, I, I'm rework it already. I've been in the process of doing that. And so, uh, the, the biggest hurdle being the preemption of the federal uh, program, I think we've been able to leap that. So give it a little bit more time. We can plug the holes and, uh, and move forward with something good. Okay, uh, Representative Abramson had his hand up first. Um, I did receive a lot of emails in support of this bill and asking that something be done, including from constituents in my district. Um, so I'll be supporting the retain, and uh, but it does apparently require uh, quite a bit of legal research to get something done on this. Representative Bartlett, oh, do you want me to be last or do you want to do that? No, yeah, let me be last. Okay, uh, Representative Abel. Uh, I, I see the problem uh, with this bill being that no pharmaceutical company will post a bond. And so the only thing that can possibly happen is that vaccines won't be available in the state of New Hampshire. So I'm opposed to this and uh, would have a different motion. Okay, uh, Representative Ben Howard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I totally agree with what Representative Abel has said. Um, it just appears to be very quick, a knee-jerk reaction to a pandemic. Uh, and, and therefore, the holes that were mentioned by the sponsor perhaps are much too large at this stage of the game to even go to retention. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, to retain so many bills and to expect that in a short time in September or October, we can bring them all to, to do justice especially those with as many holes as I see in this one, is, is, is folly right now. I think we need to attend to those that are fixable, that, that can be um, uh, patched up and, and brought to bear for, for our constituents and leave those that are much larger to be repaired and brought back in the next session. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Bilo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I too am going to, uh, uh, I'd like to ITL this bill uh, there are way too many problems, and uh, I do believe that um, if this bill passes, there um, will be some issues with um, vaccination um, that definitely needs to happen. Thank you. Okay, Representative Greeson. Yeah, I just wanted to address the, uh, the, the idea that this is a knee-jerk reaction to a pandemic. Uh, actually, this bill does not focus on anything COVID related whatsoever. This is all vaccines, uh, regardless of the nature of it. Uh, so it is not a knee jerk reaction. Uh, people have been having uh, issues with with vaccine injuries for for many, many years, uh, long before the the, uh, the, just the timing of it. Sure, uh, we could be able to take advantage of, of anything. Uh, I know of nine deaths reported in the state of New Hampshire due to the COVID vaccine. Uh, but uh, as far as this, this the, being the impetus for this bill, none whatsoever. Okay, uh, I assume the, uh, 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 some of the hands are still up or just to make sure I'm, I get the right people who wanna speak. Uh, Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I really believe that this is a way of depressing um, taking vaccines. Um, by those that are opposed to vaccines in general. Um, I don't think it's a solution to the problem this person um, or this, this group seems to have, and I will be voting to ITL this. 
Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, Representative Fargo, have, did you? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I think this is a wrong message for this time. I think that people make a choice whether or not they're going to have a vaccine and they assume the risk when they choose to be vaccinated. And um, I, I, I agree with Rich on this one. I, I, uh, I think that if we did something like this, the pharmacy may decide that they don't want to offer certain vaccines in New Hampshire. I think this is a dangerous bill right now, and I think it should be ITL'd. Okay, so so Rich and Connie, did you guys want to speak again or? Oh, okay, Representative Van Ham. Yes, um, I would just like to respond to the idea that this is not a knee jerk reaction to the uh, COVID pandemic and it may not be and I do respect the sponsor and, and his comments there. Um, but I'm wondering now if the intent of this bill is to go back to all vaccine providers, for instance, all those that provide um, infant vaccin vaccinations, vaccinations that are required for school administration. I think we're opening up, a, if that's the case, we're opening up a very large ball of wax that will be very difficult to, to unravel. And I'm even more convinced than ever that ITL is the only direction to go here on that basis. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, Representative Burroughs, have you spoken yet? Thank you. I just want to say I did a quick fact check and there's been no um, on from a number of sources, not just one, and there's been no proven links between the vaccinations and deaths. There, uh, I think there was a reference to nine deaths. Um, those were reported to have been attributed to complications from COVID-19. CDC VAERS program. The CDC VAERS, it, that's exactly what they report are the deaths due to, uh, due to vaccines and they're reporting nine. Uh, so, so what? Yeah. what? Many, how, that's not just New Hampshire. You're talking about the entire country. There's only been no. That's the state, state of New Hampshire. The state. Uh, I would dispute Hampshire. that. Okay. That's the federal. The federal. CDC, Vears program. From from that's where? That's where, I, that's where I got the data. So, Give us a website. I'll have to take responsibility. I I led <laughs> Representative Greeson to the federal compensation, which there is a federal compensation plan already in a, in effect. And they're the ones who are tracking this. And so he has he is found that piece of information. So uh, I have no reason. It, it's to not my numbers, it's the CDC. But give us a website that we can look at it, look it up. It, yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, it's, it's through the CDC. If you just, if you go to the CDC and look up vaccine. Um, but he's, he's talking about something specific. I would like him to give us the website. Well, all right. Is that going to really change your mind that if you found out there no. was not? Chairman, do we have to do this now? <laughs> we're, going to, we're not going to do this right now. Okay, he will get well, that. If, it's, if, if, you're not, if you're not open to have your mind changed, I won't waste my time sending you the link, but it is the yep. uh, uh, Centers for Disease Control. They have the called the VAERS. Uh, and so you can look it up on your own. You can do a search for based on uh, symptoms and vaccine type and your state. You can do the search criteria and you will come up with the number nine. Okay. So, uh, uh, Representative Abramson, you still have your hand up? Yeah, it's a point of order. Uh, members, we're not to uh, cast aspersions or, or challenge the motives of other members. I heard that in a couple of different comments. Um, I did have one comment um, that there is a vaccine injury fund that's paid out. I, I think it's something over $4 billion. Um, but in the last 10 years, very, very few people have even bothered to hire an attorney. It's very difficult to hire an attorney uh, and go after compensation, which is limited to $250,000 and only 6% of people have prevailed. Uh, so there are many, many, many times more people who've suffered injury, death, disability, autism, or other types of vaccine injury where um, they have, have not even pursued it as a legal issue because they know that they have very little chance of succeeding in court. Okay. Uh, is the motion clear? The motion is to retain. The clerk will call the roll. Representative Petusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. 
Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. Oh, sorry, no. Representative Herbert. No. Representative Van Houten. You're muted. Representative Van Houten. Yeah, the space bar trick does not always work. I apologize. My response is no. Thank you. You have to have the Zoom window as your focused window for that to work. So, thank you. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. no. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. No. Representative Hunts. Yes. That is 10 to 9. Okay. The Dems would be ITL, and there will be a minor minority report. Is there someone who wants to do it? It's retained. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did it before. Jump, jump in the gun. Ever. Jump well, in the gun. We all get to make that mistake once. Okay. Uh, so, Pam, are you there? I am. I have not... Yeah, I, I don't have enough information to, to research the case while you're meeting. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'd be happy to do it, but right. with the computer being used for the Zoom meeting, I didn't have access to that. I, I'm just surprised that legislative services would send us an amendment if they knew that, it, that there was a problem with the amendment. They would have told us about it, I would think. Um, I would have thought the same thing. So... So, Representative Abramson, are you is are you really want to fall on your sword on this one, or can can we go with uh, upon passage? Because I I I feel like I passed upon passage all the time. I feel like I do it yeah. at least in session. I feel like I passed one or two bills that's upon passage. So I, I I'm willing to go with this, uh, Representative Abramson. If you're if you want to vote no, that's fine. But um, how do you feel? You're muted. Uh, you're still muted. Not unmuting. Oh, nope. You unmuted and then you muted yourself. Oh, there's another button for unmuting. I'm oh. sorry. Did we move? I'm sorry. What was the vote on? Uh... Retain yeah. ten to nine. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah, we retained five ninety two. And we're on five ninety three. Now on five ninety three. Oh, you're talking about the amendment. Um. Wasn't it uh, Representative Van Houten? Didn't uh, you have the one that takes effect in 60 days? Yes. True. So shouldn't we just move forward on uh, her amendment? I, well, I, I like the sunset. So I would take the first amendment first, and then we can take up the second amendment second, which would then replace the first amendment with that language, with the changing of the uh, uh, effective date. So would we need to move? So first, we want to first move uh, Representative Bartlett's amendment that was sent out. 582. Is that the that's the uh, amendment number 582? Yep. Okay. So Representative uh, Bartlett, second by Representative Hunt, uh, moves ought to pass on the amendment 582. And Representative Bartlett, you're recognized to speak to your motion. Thank you. I'm uh, trying to do this on the phone and uh, here at the same time. Um, okay, so we all, I think we all agree that um, we've got a problem with the delivery services um, and the small restaurants are particularly being affected, whether they have um, a website that can be updated regularly, um, whether these delivery services are just automatically um, putting it on their, their website and offering these restaurants as um, a possible delivery, or whether they tell them or not. Um, I, it bothered me a lot that they collected the tips. It bothered me a lot that if there's a refund to be made by the restaurant, the delivery service does not do the refund. It would have to come from the restaurant and there's no reimbursement from the delivery service to the restaurant. Um, it bothered me that there was no contract involved and in uh, these delivery services doing this automatically for a, a hefty surcharge. Um, the example we had from Mr. Boucher, um, the owner of T-Bones in um, Copper Door and um, Cactus Jacks, 
was that a $14 burger would end up costing $29 when it was delivered. Um, and, and, and quality couldn't be guaranteed either um, because you don't know how long it'll take for these delivery services to actually deliver the meals. So, um, and that they have not, that, that unless a small business is willing to sue the delivery service, they really don't have much of a recourse. So my feeling is that this amendment um, changes the original bill from being effective January 1st of 2022, which is really too long to wait. These, these restaurants need relief now. And during the pandemic, there are people that are willing to pay um, the delivery service services um, now to be able to have a, um, a takeout meal. So one part of it was that when I spoke with the chair we did discuss the bill. Um, we did feel that there was um, need for relief right now. And in the spirit of negotiating an acceptable um, amendment that both sides could live with, I am willing to go along with a two-year sunset clause. Um, now, that's my, my personal feeling. That does not um, uh, commit anybody else from, from um, that discussion. I just thought it was so important that we get this bill passed and over to the Senate as soon as possible. If the bill, if the law needs to be changed and um, delivery services go away or they change their practices, that would give two years to be able to change it. And um, I think that all of us are motivated to look into the situation and to come back with changes if necessary before December of 2023. So that's the reason I um, was willing to bring the amendment forth and um, I hope that you can support it. Okay, uh, Representative Van Houten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm in total agreement that the relief needs to be as soon as possible for these restaurants and, and uh, small cafes and other food purveyors. I absolutely agree with that. And actually when I put the 60 day amendment in, I kind of thought it had to be 60 days. Um, I had that in the back of my mind and I don't know if that relates to what Representative Abramson has been saying or not. Um, however, I do have a problem with the sunset clause. I don't think these issues are going to go away just because the pandemic may or may not go away in, in two years. We don't know what the circumstances will be in a few years. Future legislative legislations can make that, that determination. Uh, we also know that, and I, I, I get the sense, and I could be wrong, that most of us agree with the spirit of this, that we want to give some relief and some support to these small restaurants and businesses that are being taken advantage of. Uh, and so with that in mind, um, if we pass the 60 days, and it's not just because it's my, my idea, I'm very willing to, to go with a better idea at any time. If we pass the 60 days, uh, and find that we can make it better in the Senate, we can go there and lobby and talk to our senators and get them to, to adjust things. But at least we won't be endorsing the sunset. By, by voting for the, the amendment with the sunset clause in it, we are endorsing the sunset, whereas I don't believe we should. I think we should leave it open-ended so that we can support our restaurants into the future. If we find that it's wrong, future legislations can legislators can make that adjustment. And um, so I, I I would prefer that we do not have a sunset clause on this. And um, uh, the people that I've spoken to, the constituents that are down here on, on our main street, which we call Elm Street, are hurting because of this. Their reputations are hurting. I simply don't want that to continue. I want that to happen as, in as timely a fashion as I can, but not in a way that will stop them from having better business in the future. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Abramson. Uh, it was, was just a question of uh, Representative uh, Bartlett. Uh, was it your intent with the sunset that we come back and revisit it or that you just wanted it to be in effect for two years or you wanted to see what effect this has maybe in the courts or in the marketplace before we come back and, and, and uh, reintroduce this as maybe a permanent law? I can't tell you that I was excited about putting it in, but in the spirit of compromise and being able to move this forward quickly, I'm willing to go along with it. Representative Abel. It took me a moment and I should have done the space bar. Uh, I support uh, having the sunset uh, 
for the reason that uh, I think it will make this bill uh, more likely to pass. Um, and, for, and so therefore I'm gonna vote for this amendment, but I'm not gonna vote for the second amendment, which would take, take this out. I think this is an important thing uh, to have a two year look back. So thank you. Okay, uh, next up is Re Representative Susan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as, I, as I stated before, I physically went out and talked to about a half a dozen of our local small uh, restaurants. And, I, and they told me for a fact that four of them have been victims of the DoorDash ripoff. And I agree with Representative Bartlett that it's, it's a needed to be done now, ASAP. And the two year look back, I agree with Representative Abel that this basically mandates us in two years to go back and look at it and maybe just reauthorize it or make it even better. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Pam now has something for us. Hi, I just was looking at the RSA 14 colon 9A, which is the law about effective dates and it, it outlines um, what effective dates the uh, Office of Legislative Services must include in, a, in the first draft of a bill and the bill is introduced. And it does say that each law affecting judicial practice and procedure or establishing or, or eliminating criminal prohibitions, civil causes of action or remedies or limitations of actions shall take effect on January 1st following passage. However, later in the same um, law, when it, it talks about amendments and it says the Office of Legislative Services shall at the request of the sponsor of an amendment include in the amendment the effective date requested by the sponsor. So there's the list of effective dates that are required to be in that you know, introduced bill. And then this does not answer a Supreme Court decision that, that Representative Abramson is, is referring to. It, it merely is what the state law on effective dates so that, that's what uh, the way I remembered it, which was the statute exists. That was a requirement on legislative services, but there's nothing encumbering the legislature to uh, put in whatever effective date it wants. For instance, <laughs> I remember when we did the uh, same day registration and we actually made it effective uh, three months before we actually voted on it. Uh, so that can, uh, the legislature can decide whatever effective date it wants. Okay, uh, Representative Fargo's next. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I think this problem existed before the pandemic. I think it's been exacerbated because we do so much takeout now. I don't think it's going away. I think it should be passed immediately, but I, I don't see having a sunset clause because we don't even know if we're all gonna be here in two years to go back and look at this. And I would, I would think it would be a disservice to all the small restaurants who are suffering under this to have two years pass and nobody reopen this and look at it. I just, I'm, I'm totally on board with passing it immediately, but I, I can't support the sunset clause. Yeah, the, the purpose of the sunset clause is, believe you me, if they want it, in other words, if they get, you know, go through two years and they're saying is, this really did turn out to be very important, you know, legislation and we really do need it to continue. Believe you me, uh, the restaurant and hospitality says you will not have trouble finding a representative put in the bill to um, uh, to repeal the sunset. Um, the reason I, I think it's a good idea is that um, we, this is a pretty dramatic policy and I think that we really wanna make sure we think about it. Normally this would have been a bill I would have retained or you know, in an in interim study to work on it, done, done it right through subcommittee, but we didn't have time. And this is a, where we all feel that this is something we wanna do now to help this industry out right now. And that's why I think this, this uh, doing it this way makes a lot of sense. Representative, who's next? Representative Ammon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the underlying bill, uh, I know we're talking about the amendment. Uh, I'm 100% gonna- yeah, right, now we're talking, right now we're supposed to be talking about the amendment. But. Okay, so I think the two year sunset clause makes a bad bill slightly better. Um, and had I had I not thought we were gonna 
not retain this bill, I might have put my own amendment in. Um, I'll be voting for the amendment, but against the underlying bill. That's my position. Okay. And, and I'll speak to that when the bill when we're talking about the bill. Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, Representative Abel, did you want to speak again? Nope. Okay. And Representative Van Houten. Thank you. Um, first of all, just a quick point of order. I'm always confused as to how things go when we have two or more amendments. Yep. Um, could you re repeat that process for me, please? Okay. So we have this first amendment that we, we are going to take up. Um, if it were to pass, we still can take up, you know, we still can have someone then bring in the second amendment. And at that point in time, it would replace that portion of the first amendment, which was the, um, the, the effective date. So and the sunset I'm, portion would be gone, am I correct? Am I doing that right, Pam? Or is there, Yeah, I have, mean, it's the cleanest and, and, and under, you know, normal conditions, we would have a third amendment, uh, you know, drawn up to reflect exactly what you want. You know, there would, it, it's always best to adopt one amendment. But in this case, I think if, if everybody is, is really clear on what you're doing um, with the, the um, sunset clause and the amendment, and, and since it's a nice, simple amendment with, with one or two pieces, I think we can make it clear. And then what will happen is a single amendment that you don't have before you will be created and there will be in the house calendar, you know, sh should this go forward, one amendment that that has whatever you all vote on it contained in it. So in the end, there will be one amendment. That is it correct. It doesn't have to be either of these. It could be in a... Uh, yeah. in a well, well, I think the concept is you would... You would potentially adopt both of these amendments and therefore you would need a third amendment that combines the two ideas. And Correct. who decides what that third amendment will contain? You have to pass both of them to make that happen. But we would want to be extremely clear that everybody agreed on what that, what you were doing. So and I think it would be clear in this case, it would be the perspective repeal plus it sounds like 60 days for the, for the remainder of the bill. Okay, may I just clarify my mind, which is not at all clear. Okay. Um, I think that, I really do believe that the relief needs to be soon. I don't like the sunset clause, but I do believe that um, I will vote against my own amendment in order to provide immediate relief for those people who need that relief. Um, I don't know how else to do it because I like one piece and I don't like the other piece, but I don't want people to suffer because I'm falling on my philosophical sword. Well, Thank you can you. withdraw it. But, here, but now right now we're talking the first amendment right now. We haven't taken her amendment up yet, okay? But I, this, I, if nothing else, I wanna show everybody, this is exactly the reason why I like things being done in subcommittee so that these issues are sorted out long before we get to the full committee and take these things up. Um, and so normally my normal nature would have been to retain this bill, but because we all have a sense of urgency, um, I think by it passing it upon, uh, upon passage and uh, having us a chance to have a revisit, uh, I think is, is, is a win-win. Okay, uh, who's next? Uh, Representative Herbert. Thank you, Chairman Hunt. Um, the First Amendment is the sunset or the, uh, the first initial date? The First Amendment has two things in it. It has upon passage yep. and the sunset. That's the amendment. That's, we're just in, that's in the First Amendment. That's yeah. the amendment we're discussing. Both of them. Here. Yes. That's the Bartlett Amendment that you should have. So uh, next up is Representative Osborne. Thank you. Sorry, I had a call coming in at the same time. Hey, um, so I'm probably in the same boat as my twin representative Ammon over there, uh, but I do think this uh, sunset is a uh, smart idea. The um, you know the, the problems that we are seeing in this particular industry are are uh, the result of or or if not uh, greatly exacerbated by uh, the pandemic. 
Uh, anytime you have a uh, exogenous shock to a system like this, uh, people are going to be scrambling to try to uh, to fill to fill the holes and uh, fulfill those customers' needs. Um, and uh, I, I think we'll find that um, you know as things smooth out, as uh, uh, you know delivery drivers become more um, experienced, as these uh, delivery companies uh, become more experienced in uh, in providing these services, uh, th these kinds of issues are going to smooth themselves out over time. And uh, this uh, temporary fix that we're uh, putting in there should, should really only need to be temporary. Um, and I think we'll find as time goes on that having contracts between the uh, uh, delivery companies and the restaurants is not uh, really gonna be uh, the solution that everyone thinks it's going to be. Um, as an example, I, I do all of the customer service for a, uh, a very large uh, national restaurant chain uh, we process uh, over 10,000 uh, customer interactions a day. And every single negative interaction we have is because of the delivery service that they use. Uh, and they do have a contract with them. And it's, it's one you have heard of before. Uh, so um, uh, just again, so look, look for that in the future for this problem to be continued, even when contracts are in place. But, I mean, I, that, and that's really, you know, it gets to, to my initial response is that we, we to, to force people to be in a contract, a contract, to force businesses to do a contract is, is, is an anathema to my nature. Um, so, at any rate, uh, any more discussion on the motion uh, to ought to pass on the Bartlett Amendment? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon. Yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. I just realized my video wasn't on. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Representative Johnson. Yes, sorry. Yep, Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Yes. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Oh, Representative Fargo. Exactly. I've been too sorry. Sweet. No. No? Yeah. No. Well, Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Yes. And Representative Hunts. Yes. 17 to 2. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. I would like to withdraw my amendment okay. in order to get the best chance of immediate relief for a cause that we all believe in and to get it to people now while they need it, or at least as close to now as we can. I don't know if, at all if I'm doing the right thing. I, I don't like the sunset clause. I wish it weren't there, but I can't, I don't want to hold things. I don't want to hold up some potential relief if it can be found. So thank you for that. Please withdraw um, okay. 0530H. Thank okay. you. All right, so let's go forward with a uh, um, motion. Um, uh, there's a representative Hunt, seconded by Representative Patusek, um, ought to pass as amended. Is there any discussion on the motion? Is your hand up, Representative Ammon, to discuss? It is. So I just like to say, uh, get on my soapbox a little bit here. <clears throat> when we see a problem in society, our first reaction should not be to create a violation and a fine for that problem. Um, I think an intermediary step would be to allow for more information to flow into the marketplace so that people can make better decisions. So for instance, if you're a restaurant serving takeout, you can't tell who comes in 
as a customer or who comes in as a DoorDash driver. So one idea would be to make them wear some kind of identifying mark. So the cost, so the restaurant would be able to decide whether or not to serve that person or serve that company and then require notification on websites, right? Um, this bill creates a violation, a hundred dollar fine for each violation without an agreement. And there's no discussion of enforcement. Very little, I, I don't remember much discussion about enforcement. What happened, how do you prove uh, that the client or, you know, the customer received the, the end customer receiving the sandwich or the burrito or whatever it is. Uh, you know, how, how do they report a violation or even know there is a violation to report? So I, I think this is a knee jerk reaction to a real problem. Um, and this type of reaction happens way too often in the legislature. So I'm going to be voting against all to pass with amendment and, uh, those are my reasons. So thank you. Fair enough. Um, obviously, that's why I was urging for the sunset is so we can revisit all these pieces. Representative Bilo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to remind people that um, one of the uh, individuals that testified um, was Tom Boucher, um, who owns several restaurants, the T-Bones and Cactus, Cactus Jacks, and he was in support of this bill. He has over a thousand employees, so there definitely is an issue. He did take enforcement because he's, he did hire an attorney because this was happening uh, to him, and he won because he was able to afford an attorney. So, um, you know, I'm going to go with this bill. I'm going to vote to let odd to pass because it's much needed. Thank you. Fair enough. Is there any more discussion on the motion about to pass as amended? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> Representative Osborne's hands up. I don't know if that was from before. Uh, yeah, it's from before. Okay. Uh, ought to pass as amended. Representative Patusik. With gratitude to Representative Van Houten, I vote yes. Representative Osborne. Um, a half-hearted yes. <laughs> Representative Ammon, no. Representative Abramson. Uh, uh, I'll vote aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palma. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Reluctantly, yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. Yes. Representative Abel. Yes. Representative Herbert. Uh, yeah, they should be in jail for taking somebody's copyright. Representative Van Houten. Yes. Representative Fargo. Yes. Representative Weston. Yes. Representative Bellew. Yes. Representative Burroughs. Yes. Representative McAleer. Yes. And Representative Hunts. Uh, Hunt is yes. Hunts is ketchup. We don't. We don't <laughs> Oh, I just, I overpronounced the T, I think. So the vote is 18 to me. 18 to you. <laughs> Would it be a minority report, Representative Ammon? Uh, if I had more time, I would, but I'm, I'm going to let this one slide. Okay. Uh, do you want to leave it on the regular calendar rather than uh, putting yeah. it on the calendar? Uh, yeah, I think let's do that. That'll be a good compromise. Okay. All right. And we got one bill left. And how, how much time do we have? A half hour. Hour? Anita, was, how long does it take you to get to get your vaccine? <laughs> um, I already figured that in. I don't have to be there all 3.15. So if I right. sign up at 3, get in my car, I'm good. All right. I was sure. Sorry, I forgot. It was you, Tina. Right. Okay. Uh, so the last bill, House Bill 618, polyestrine packaging. Representative Abramson, seconded by Representative Patusek, moves inexpedient to legislate. And uh, Representative Abramson is recognized to speak to his motion. 
so here's the reason that I um, decided to move inexpedient to legislate. Um, the bill on the surface says it would ban polystyrene, but it, it doesn't ban the replacement. When you have container of eggs, if they can't use polystyrene, they use plastic or paper or cardboard. Um, when you're uh, serving food or have seconds or get something at the deli or the, the soup kitchen, uh, instead of using, if you're not using polystyrene, you're using thick uh, plastic, which may not even be recyclable. Uh, when you have a to-go box from the restaurant um, to get the same insulating effect, you need a lot of cardboard and it costs, it doesn't just cost a lot more, it's, it's a lot more material. Or for, for a, a cup at the coffee shop, it's not just the plastic lid and the thick paper cup, the cardboard sleeve, the black and green ink that they you invariably use with paper and cardboard, uh, which is, is toxic when it ends up in landfills and then leaches out. Um, I, it, I, I viewed this as an either or, and although I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of polystyrene in general, it's, you know, it's either this or every other type of material that, that, that gets used. And there's a lot of, there's obviously a lot of polystyrene that's, that's in inventory that instead of, um, you know, sitting around in uh, closets and cupboards and instead of just disappearing or evaporating, it would have to go out to other states uh, because you couldn't use it anymore. Uh, so I, I, I understand what the, what the uh, bill sponsor is trying to get to. She's concerned about uh, uh, the landfills filling up, but if you replace these very useful polystyrene containers with something else, usually you end up requiring heavier or additional material with something else. It doesn't just cost more to use these alternatives. Um, it's more material and most of the, the alternative materials uh, use ink. Polystyrene containers almost never have inks or dyes. It, it, and it's those types of toxic, toxic green ink that I was most concerned about. And that's why I decided uh, to ITL for not just cost, but environmental reasons. Okay. Uh, first up is Representative Herbert. Thank you, Chairman Hunt. I um, I'm going to support six eighteen uh, because we're drowning in this crap, and we have to get rid of it. We're going to have to stop using a lot of things. This being just one, so I mean it, we don't have a choice in the matter. We're going to have to do it. So I think it's uh, time to long past time to. Uh, we passed the threshold a long time ago. We've got some deep digging to do, and I want to start it as soon as possible. Okay, uh, Representative Greeson. Sorry, I was expecting to be called a little bit later down the line there. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, I'm actually in in in, uh, in favor of uh, of ITLing this bill. I don't think we need to actually ban. Uh, polystyrene containers. It's not just the to-go containers. Polystyrene is used in all kinds of, of applications. Go to your meat market or your grocery store and buy meat and you'll find a, a little plastic, a, a styrofoam tray. Uh, and that has proven to be a very effective means. You'd be getting rid of that. What are you going to put the food on now? But okay. even more importantly than that, um, I think science is actually presenting a solution to all the landfill and all the, all the issues for, uh, um, for polystyrene and plastics and stuff like that uh, in, in what MIT is, uh, has been studying in the effect of light uh, on, on polystyrene and plastics. I think there is a machine that somebody, a brilliant mind at MIT is, is, is prepared to invent that will just bombard plastics and polystyrene uh, with, with the UV and the, and, the, and the visible light and break it down. Right now, the science is saying if you just leave it out in nature, it might take 100 years as opposed to 1,000 years. Great. That's great. Put it in a machine and bombard it. It might only take a day and a half. I don't know what the, what it is, but certainly there is a, a brilliant mind who's ready to use his, and develop a machine that will take care of that. I think science gave us the polystyrene container and science will solve the problem. Okay. Uh, Representative Bilo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Greeson just uh, mentioned um, meat counters and how the meat is um, um, sold um, uh, on this phone. 
And in Europe, they have adopted alternative um, ways of doing business regarding uh, these styrofoam pro products is they bring their own recycled containers to the meat counters mm -hmm. and to the restaurants so that they can take home um, their meat or their to-go's in their own recycled containers. Thank you. Reusable containers. Perfect. Uh, okay, Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, um, I'd like to address a couple of things. One is uh, regarding inventory. This pile of styrene um, containers take up a lot of room and this bill would not even be effective until January the 1st. So there's plenty of time to get rid of um, any inventory that might be there. Another issue was that um, um, there was concern about these trays being used for meats and fish and things. Those are exempted in the bill. There's a number of exemptions um, on page two that talks about things that would continue to be used for the time being. Um, three, I think that we really have got to address plastics. There are a lot of different kinds of plastics. Um, these polystyrene um, containers, I'm, I'm certainly hoping that they will be bro broken down at some point, but right now the half life on them, half life on them is very long. Um, and they're getting involved. They, they break down when they break down, they, the wildlife, um, ingest it. We, um, can also ingest it. These plastics are not good. And for many, many years, we did not have to use polystyrene. It's full of, of fossil-based fuels, and we. Um, my feeling is that we have got to start moving away from them. And this bill is a start. It's only a start. There's plenty of polystyrene that would continue to be used, but alternatives would would start to be offered. So I cannot. Um, I, I certainly would be looking for a motion of OTP. Okay, Representative Van Helden. Uh, thank you very much. I'd just like to point out um, a, a major reason why I would be interested in an OTP motion should one come uh, to the table is, uh, is in the bill itself. This is simply enabling legislation. The bill itself, and I'm reading from the bill, municipalities shall have the sole authority under this subdivision to regulate, implement, and enforce the prohibition on polystyrene foam food service products. We are allowing the municipalities the ability to govern themselves to decide what works best for them in terms of this issue. Perhaps a very small town uh, will look at this very differently. Perhaps their use is very minimal compared to say a, a Manchester, which is where I reside. So I think it's important to realize that we are not actually doing anything for polystyrene per se. We are allowing localities to make their own decisions. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Petusek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if memory serves, a couple of sessions ago, there was a law, something like this, against plastic bags. And we know what happens to plastic bags when COVID-19 hit. You could not use any recyclable bags. So I would say, in this case, be careful of what you ask for. Also, a second thing, I heard that they are allowing uh, people to bring in their own styrofoam recyclable uh, things in Europe to be reused. That has the same sanitary problems as recyclable growlers in the United States as the bill that we didn't pass. And lastly, I'm concerned about our small businesses having to pay twice or three times the amount of what they're paying now and still being in the hole, trying to get out of the hole through the pandemic uh, thing that we're in till the end of the year. Uh, they can't afford to be buying new items to replace polystyrene, which is dirt cheap right now, and still try to make a profit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so I would remind everybody this not to confuse the two words, recyclable and reusable. There are two different concepts. Okay, so I see hands up, but I, I think you've all spoken already. So do people want to speak again? So Representative Bartlett, would you like to speak? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, I just wanted to um, point out that during the pandemic, um, the New Hampshire Grocers Association was very, um, shall we say, um, forceful in their promotion that only new plastic bags could be used and people couldn't use bags. There had no, there was no scientific basis from which they were doing that. They were serving their own ends on that. Um, obviously, the there there's very little scientific basis for any contact spread of this virus. And we've those of us that do reuse have gone back to our own cloth bags. That's all. Okay. Uh, Representative uh, Herbert, did you want to speak again? No. Okay. Uh, Representative Abramson, you have the last word. Um, so I don't know if this committee last session got any of the plastic bag bands, plastic straw bands and so forth, but my committee certainly got uh, quite a few of them and we were warned um, uh, as I think it was in February, right before the coronavirus was making its way, we received a number of warnings, not just from uh, business groups, but also from uh, uh, private citizens and policy experts that diseases could spread very easily through uh, recycling. And if, uh, if recycled bags are made mandatory and uh, disposable single use bags were banned, that there would be no flexibility available. And so it, it ended up being lucky that the governor vetoed a number of these bills um, just in just the nick of time in some cases. Uh, so my, my preference is let the marketplace work, let individual consumers decide for themselves if they're if somebody is morally opposed to polystyrene and they just insist on using cardboard, let you know let them go to a place with recycled cardboard or or recycled plastic or uh, some other material. It, it, it's much more effective in, in my experience to let consumers uh, bring about the change. And um, I certainly McDonald's got the message, and I don't get Big Macs in styrofoam anymore. I get it in cardboard. Okay, uh, is, the question is uh, inexpedient to legislate. Question clear, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Patusik. Yes. Representative Osborne. Yes. Representative Ammon, yes. Representative Abramson. Aye. Representative Ham. Yes. Representative De Palmer. Yes. Representative Greeson. Yes. Representative Johnson. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Bartlett. No. Representative Abel. No. Representative Herbert. No. Nope. Representative Van Houten. No. Representative Fargo. No. Representative Weston. No. Representative Bellew. No. Representative Burroughs. No. Representative McAleer. No. Representative Hunt. Yes. 10 to 9. Okay. And I yes, see there will be a minority report. report. <laughs> <laughs> and a floor speech. How's that? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, a couple, yes. Go ahead, Jane. Did you have something? Well? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, could I? Uh, just make a statement about the CDC VAERS program. I did a little bit of research when I, uh, when I was at lunch. My, my preference would be that yeah, I would love to hear what you have to say and what you're, you know, what you're thinking, but um, I, I would love you just to send an email out to all the members. Okay. Because we're taking, taking action. Um, so before I close the- It keeps you from getting on the video. <laughs> right. Question. I mean, there, I mean there's, there's a problem with what he said. I again, I we this is going to be an ongoing discussion, I'm sure, and I and I um, I'm I'm very interested in hearing it. Um, obviously, we retained it, so we can talk about it a lots and lots come September. But um, but uh, feel free to send out an email to forward uh, as a response. Um, Question. I want to remind everybody that those who did make the motion, I'd, I'd like to have um, your uh, majority and minority reports. Um, you know, by, you know, by Thursday, 
Uh, since we've got, we've got extra day here. So tomorrow afternoon where you would have been doing this, uh, please get in front of your computer and pound out uh, some, some short stories for me. Um, um, can I just ask um, of the Dems, does um, somebody want to do the minority report on the styrofoams or do you want me to do it? That was my question. Who's doing oh, that? Representative Burroughs has put up her hand. Burroughs. Representative Burroughs, you're going to do the um, minority report on this one? I would be delighted. Okay. okay. All, all to pass. Okay. Yes. And not to pass. Okay. So then, um, uh, just in terms of the floor session, obviously, um, uh, you know, if people want to speak, and I'll be working with you, Chrissy, but obviously, we want to um, we want to kind of keep the speakers list down. Uh, we want to be have the reputation as a committee that that short, brief, and to the point, and uh, without belaboring and putting everybody to sleep, um, and and just dragging this painful sessions. Uh, I don't think anybody's sleeping during this session. <laughs> so uh, that's probably true, but um, I don't know. It just feels like a nice carpet there. You know, I feel very <laughs> just roll, For soccer. Lie, lie down and, and go to sleep. Um, so otherwise, this is uh, I'm pleased that we were able to get a comp get this done uh, uh, as quickly as we have and accomplish it. I realize that it, it looks uh, very foreboding when we get to September and October. Um, so I would warn everybody that normally we only did one day a week and we would have um, you know, uh, uh, subcommittees working uh, simultaneously. And I would still be doing that anyway, simultaneously. Um, but I think that we can still uh, work uh, 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 very efficiently and try to and get through all these. Um, a lot of them will be dependent upon what happens with the Senate. And so this is, this is just, we're only, in, we're only at intermission for committee work. Um, and we will take this up again uh, in, in April. Uh, I want to remind everybody again about the, the vacation that I will be taking. So that means you get a vacation. And that will be the, uh, uh, I fly out the 9th, April 9th. So that must be 10, 11, 12, April 12th, 12th to the 17th, that five days um, that the Commerce will not be, be doing anything. Um, April 9th through the, I'm sorry, what? Uh, I'm going off the top of my head because I have a calendar, but it, I assume it's the 12th to the 17th. That that's is that Monday to Monday to uh, 12th to the 17th. We're not meeting period. Right, not meeting. Okay. So yeah, 12th to the yeah. 16th. Don't get sunburn. Uh, right. <laughs> so are we not meeting tomorrow? So we are not. We don't need to meet tomorrow. So okay. you go off, but so do your do your minority report. Um, and anything else I need to say? Thank you all very much. And uh, um, um, just let the Dems know that I will be sending out an email this afternoon, and um, we'll we'll do a, a caucus in the next day. Ellen, yes. Do we send the minority and majority reports to you and yeah. to Carrie? Well, you can, but she's going to then forward it to me. So, you know, sending it to me, and then I and then I review that, and then I send them on to Carrie, and then Carrie posts them, and then Pam gets one more look at it. All <laughs> so, right, thank you. Yeah, terrible stuff. Um, and I'm and I, you know, I don't change people's minority reports too badly. So, other than that, uh, I'll have a wonderful cold day, and hopefully, an expectation of warm weather soon enough. We're out of exact. Bye-bye.